Oh, immersion break. Okay. Uh, sorry there was a slight delay. I, um... My- I've been messing with, like, my OBS scenes lately, so my hotkey wasn't working. It was being a little- being a little, you know, a little annoying. Anyway, Dance, how's it going? How have you been, lad? I feel like it's been a while. How long has it been? Um, like, two- two weeks? Yeah, we'll, we'll say about that. Anyway, thank you for the serotonin. It is much appreciated. <laughs> Survive have their exams and finals for real. Yeah, I ended up getting an A minus in the class. I actually got a pretty good grade on the paper. I think I was like second top final grade something. Office drama and trauma is keeping me alive. I feel that. I get you. Hold on. I hear an echo. Um. Gosh, now everyone's trying to text me. Sheesh. Anyway, so I'm not sure what I want to do today. I, I had some plans. Possibly, maybe we'll do some Tomb Raider. I don't know if that was going to be, like, boring or if everyone would be interested in that. Because I was also thinking we could do some more, like, reactions to the, uh, Criminal Psych YouTube channel that I thought was kind of cool last time we were live. Also, what kind of office drama? Is it like long drama or is it like... Could you give me like a synopsis? Oh, but yeah. My OBS settings are all jacked. I have like two weeks off though. In between last term and this term. Yeah, I think two weeks. But, uh, my first 25% of <laughs> my vacation, I've just spent, like, detoxing and cleaning everything. Like, a good old spring break type of situation. And we'll see how long this hoodie lasts. You know, I probably should have checked my options prior, but I'm gonna just trust that Tomb Raider works good. Yeah. So we'll do that. Maybe if some more peeps come, maybe I'll switch it up and we'll do some YouTube stuff. I don't know. Excuse me. I have played, I think, the original Tomb Raider a couple of times. But I have not, I have not played any of the sequels, I don't think. Also, please let me know if the, the, like, sounds weird. I told you about the coworker whose wife hit her ability to cook. Yes, you did. And accidentally gave food poisoning. Yes, yes. The same fucker had a mental breakdown and ended in HR after smashing his keyboard? Oh, no. Oh, lord. That sounds quite eventful. I shouldn't sound so excited. Maybe that's a little messed up with me. Combat difficulty, we'll do normal. Yeah, that should be fine. A famous explorer once said that the extraordinary is in what we do. <sighs> I wonder what triggered that at work. That's definitely a good way to get the eyes on you, though. Sheesh. I'm in the habit to want to skip through it, but I feel like I shouldn't if there's any people lurking that have not seen this before. You know, I do like this new Tomb Raider, though. I kind of like how they redid Laura Croft. I was looking at some of the older ones that I used to play. I might even throw in, like, a Tomb Raider Legends if I'm really feeling froggy, because that's my favorite Tomb Raider. But yeah, it wasn't too shabby. Not bad at all. Then again, maybe I'm also just a bit more into that, like, hyper-realism type of thing. I don't know.
But yeah, if you have any good, like, uh, criminal psych episodes to watch, I'll definitely be down to check them out. It's clearly going through stuff. I'll probably have to pay. Yeah, I'm just be sure to days off. He's mad about something. Oh, yeah, I can feel that. Just everything kind of just stacking up all at once. I definitely get that. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boat crashed. I get abandoned. But I don't have all my cool bonus stuff. I remember playing this on console, and I always liked all the alternate outfits. I feel like the original outfit kind of sucks. That's the one thing when you switch over to PC and you don't have all the bonus features. You just keep wanting the things that you used originally. Hopefully he takes a couple days off, though. I would certainly agree with you, Dan. Ooh. <laughs> that startled me. <laughs> God, it's been so long. I feel like it's been so long since I've even played a game. Shit. I wasn't sure what my plans were. So I have it on just chatting. Just chatting for now because I might end up changing my mind. We'll see. I've been also thinking about maybe playing some Blood Rain. I don't know. I wonder how long you can last upside down before you die. Hmm. Oh, I just have to pretend I know what I'm doing. And we're fine. We're good, Laura. Um. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that looks good. Anyway, what's new with me? What new things have been going on? What has all happened since I've last been live? Huh? Well, finals was- Oh, I'm gonna get fucking stabbed, bro. And then I went on vacation. Did I show up before- Mash E to pull. Alright. Love that for me. Love that for me. I mean, we always have a couple more mancers that we could always do, too. Oh, God. No. Laura, you're fine, dude. You're good. What is this? Um, just good old occultists, you know? Oh, what is- What was I watching earlier? I was watching some Junji Ito. I wish I could show you guys. I was- I started getting more into Junji Ito. He does, like, a lot of, like, Japanese horror. I, I hope I'm right when I say that. And... I feel like I- I totally get why he's so popular now. And maybe why I don't love traditional horror. I really like the mind fucky, like mind bendy type of almost like psychologically thrilling than like straight up horror. I don't know. Like mental torture is better to me than like some boring like Saw movie almost, you know? Damn it. Oh, these aren't bad at all. Okay. Space to jump. I can't. Oh, I thought because I was injured I wouldn't be able to jump. Interesting. Very interesting. If you want more criminal drama, I'm gonna have some 
old solid interrogation tapes. The ones about Chris White. Ooh, I mean, if you're if you're down, we could definitely watch some more uh, interrogation. I think that would totally be cool. The dude murdered his wife and daughters in the middle of the night. The neighbors got worried and had him and four kid loading what 100 could have been a corpse in his car. Plus, the dude was a shit liar with inconsistencies and enough time to get his story straight. Thanks to people sending the cops at his home. Wife. Ooh, that does sound kind of cool. Okay, we'll do that. I'm I'm down for that because I'm probably gonna want to learn these controls better. So I'll keep this on my back burner. Excuse me. That sounds pretty good, actually. Okay, I'll look him up. We'll do that then. I was kind of feeling a little bit more of just like bullshitty today, as opposed to playing games. But I'm always down for both. You know what I mean? Gosh, why is this bent so weird? <clears throat> also, we got a monster again today, of course. It's been a while since I've had a monster, actually. I haven't really been getting too much caffeine in my system. But I have certainly been hitting the gym a lot more, which is sick. I think I've finally been to the gym now for like two weeks, officially. It's kind of nice, though. I feel like a real bro when I go every time. <laughs> I don't know if that's a weird thing to say. Hydrate, you're right. You're right, Dance, you're right. Oh, God damn it, YouTube. Come on now. Hold on. It's kind of, oh my God, too bright. Let's see. Sorry, I have to like verify my identity. Uh, yes. There we go. Great. If you got good night's sleep, you usually need twice as many extra nights as you stayed awake to fully recover. Yeah. I did take a nap and I woke up like two hours ago. I, I stayed up a little bit later since I've just been. Well, it's like I never know how to take a break, apparently. Like, I'm just bad at taking a break. <laughs> like, it's just, I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why I have a hard time doing it. I just, for some reason, refuse to actually give myself, like, an official day off. That's just how I be. All right, Chris Wyatt. Kind of excited, actually. Mm. <laughs> Probably not that guy. Um, Chris Watts. Mm, okay, perfect. Oh, part three. I wonder if I can get a... I've been wanting to watch the video about, uh, stop abusing yourself. Dude, I, I know. I, I really should. It's always that looming feeling. I'm like, I really should have a break. And then I'm like, two weeks off? I could totally, completely clean and go through every single item in my entire house. Oh, wow. This channel does not have a crazy amount of subscribers at all. Holy shit. Thank you. Thank you, Dance. I looked up Wyatt and I just seen some, like, poor guy that just does, like, zoo shit or something. I was like, oh, no. Probably not this, sir. Probably not this guy. I'm really out outing him right now. All right, let me... Bruh. Sure, that sounds like click, clicky shit. Sure, awesome. That's a phenomenal title. Love that. Awesome. Cool. All right, Chris Watts. Let's see, my dude. After the how he goes. Damn, a whole murder though. I want are all are most of the things on this channel like based off of, like, murder interrogations, the fucking Jody one. I really should watch the Jody one. I remember when that case was live. She fucking got free. Insane. 
Frederick Police Department received a call from Nicole. It was like a modern OJ. The best friend of Shannon Watts. She had arranged to drive Shannon into town that same day for a pregnancy checkup, but there was no answer when Ooh. she knocked at the door, nor any response to her text messages or phone calls. After noticing her shoes were still at the front door, she became concerned and called 911. Nicole? Yes. Okay. What's going on? So, my friend, um, we were out of town for a business trip this weekend. All right. And I dropped her off at 2 o'clock this morning. She's 15 weeks pregnant. She wasn't feeling well. And she had a doctor's appointment this morning at 9. And I told her to let me know if she needed me to take her. She's got when you kill a pregnant person, is it considered a double homicide? How would that, like, are you charged twice for the murders? I've called, I've texted. Her car's in the garage, her shoes she wears, everything. Should rot in jail just for Dude, I know, right? That's why I'm like, she is honestly the modern OJ. And I can't figure out why the fuck they would- We'll have to watch that one, because that's a case that I actually am like- like, I, I remember being, like, insane. I hate friends like that in my life. Honestly, right? Somebody who has the the care enough? Yeah, agreed. What a great person. Day, right the front door. How you doing? You seen your neighbor? I don't love that hairstyle, I'm gonna be honest. You know what? I shouldn't be a hater. It gives me Jedi Today. vibes. No? But, uh, it's something. What's Chris's phone number? Chris's phone number. Okay. Hey, Chris, Officer Coonrod for the police department. I wasn't expecting to get this whole background analysis. This would be kind of cool. I like that it's broken up into different parts. Pretty good. So, do you have any idea where your wife is? Right. Ooh. You know, I feel like it's a lot easier to murder somebody who's not very sociable. I feel like if you're gonna murder somebody, you should try to murder somebody that doesn't really have friends. I, what my concern is her car's here, they're saying she is diabetic, and I don't want her if she's upstairs and can't respond. Beautiful house though. What a beautiful house. <laughs> Okay, about how far out are you? Uh, okay, all right. He said like five minutes. It's not a sure sign of guilty conduct, yet the fact that Chris made the officer wait for his return would have most likely alerted some minor suspicion. In yeah, it is a bit a peculiar. A husband received a call from the police saying they were concerned about the safety of their pregnant wife and children in most cases. The background is needed. The dude looks like a deer in headlights and obviously bullshit on the body cam. Oh, oh no. Like, you would think, well, I was going to say you'd think you would plan it out better, but one, usually everybody's overzealous in what they, they think that they can probably hide a body when more than likely they fucking can't. It's a lot harder than I think people believe. But two, I'm assuming it was just impulsive then? It couldn't have been premeditated. Otherwise, what a fucking would have dumbass. Given permission to immediately kick the door down. It's a truly somber awareness to know that the man stepping out of the car had only a very short time ago dumped his infant daughter's bodies into an or That's my curiosity, right? Couldn't have been premeditated. Also, the what was he expecting? Obviously, people are going to be like, "Where the fuck is your family?" Also, why aren't you like concerned? Why don't you file a a missing report? Why don't you find like a missing persons or something? Oil tank and buried his pregnant wife in a shallow grave. Scott, how you doing? How's it going? So this is the only vehicle she would have? Only one that yeah. she would drive? Okay. The familiar routine for anyone. Yeah, oh my god. Most people greatly overestimated their criminals are pe people are dumb. Yeah, exactly. Like like, my thing I'm confused about, right, is, like, they seem like they live in a nice area. Beautiful, big fucking house. All the other houses around them look fucking nice. So you know they have money. And, of course, people are going to talk in communities like this. And to just have your kids and wife just randomly disappear, people are going to notice that and be fucking suspicious. It's not like you're burying the fucking body of your wife who is, like, estranged and in the middle of nowhere with you. Where you could maybe cover it up longer but even then to not file any fucking reports 
The not filing a report's weird, right? It's like... Anyone checking for someone's presence inside a house, whether it be an emergency or otherwise, is to immediately call out to them for instantaneous reassurance. Chris remains silent, but instead feels the need to examine his wife's car before subtly sneaking through the... <laughs> he just peeks through the window and he's like, eh, she's not in there, sorry. But the smart criminals rot in jail. Or were never caught at all, so the gene pool has profited from their genius. I, I, yeah, I guess so. I just am like... At the very least, it'd make you look a little less sketchy, because you're like, I'm also concerned because I don't know where they are. Garage door. He then disappears for one minute and seven seconds before letting the neighbors and police officer inside. Only yeah. police will know what he carried out during that time period, but it's safe to assume that his curious... She's been missing, like, less than a day. Her friends did a solid by showing up and calling the cops. Ooh. I guess that's fair, then, less than a day. But even then, I just... Yeah, the fact that he's like, I don't know why her car's here. It's like, well, then who took her? Behavior was not going Is she going for a walk? Evident by the unsettled gaze of Nicole as he opens the door. Yeah, to have somebody so self-aware. Oh, my God. What a great fuck... Are they neighbors? Matter of fact, come in, Chris. There were multiple key moments captured from inside like, the house, which may not have been noticed immediately by the officer, but would have no doubt been gathered by forensics upon... F I'm, I'm just so like, I'm just so... <laughs> I'm like, wow, what a nice house. When the dude showed up, he had spent the night burying their corpses. He really just thought that they wouldn't be able to find them, eh? Hey? Investigation. The most overt peculiarity. I'm really curious to know what kind of like motive they might try to pull from this. Chris's interaction with his phone. The guise of his thumb movement would have given the impression he was texting someone, which would have seemed very peculiar, as the normal response would be to frantically call people rather than text, given the circumstance. That's a good point, too. Yeah. Hindsight gives us a clearer picture of Chris's introversion, which is that he was most likely using his phone to avoid eye contact and progressive dialogue with the officer. What time do you leave the day? All I'm saying is I probably would have been fucking alerted quickly, too, if my wife and kid were fucking gone, but their vehicle wasn't gone. Was I'm to leave there? Come no, here. But I didn't know where they were. Shannon here then? Yes. Like, it is almost always a spouse. It is almost always about money and or sex. Yeah, I guess that's a common, I, for some reason, my brain always just assumes like just fucking rage, but God, especially when like, like it's one thing, I guess, to kill the spouse, not fucking va validating that at all, but then to I guess oof your kid too. What a fucking weird interaction. Yeah, it's like where. Does she usually watch the kids. Like, do you know where she is then? Because you don't seem like you give two shits. A police officer's in your house. Like. You guys have any kind of issues, marital issues, or? You are. How's that going? Civil for the most civil. part, or... uh, no, <laughs> civil. Uh, you know how it'll be. Sometimes your your wife pisses you off, and sometimes you just don't alive your whole family. Additionally, we are presented with like, the subtle cues of Chris's... excuse me. To kill your pregnant wife and young daughters it wasn't just rage. Like he could have. Faked an intrusion, there was no need to kill the- That's my thing. That was my thing, right? It's like, one thing to have like some fucked vendetta, like against like your spouse, ex-spouse, whatever. Like, either way, don't murder people, obviously. But when it comes to... Like, money or sex, how the kids have any tie into that is fucking insane. Like you mentioned, there would have been a lot smarter ways to even like have somewhat of a fucking case so people didn't just directly look at you forethought cover story but just like i'm gonna fucking nonchalantly he text his wife simply ran off with the kids after a breakdown in the marriage you think she just ran away 
So his thing is they ran away. But there's... But she didn't use her car? Um... They're blanky, they sleep with, they don't leave anywhere without them. Good. And even then, it's like, usually... If you're going through a separation process, I'm assuming it's also to get things more legally squared away. Thanks for the info, bro. Be analyzed and it's so weird to see how people, like, upper-class people live, though, not gonna lie. In various ways. But yeah, no, I just, I don't... And it would be easy to pick at certain oddities in body language. God, I can't even fucking imagine doing that. I don't... And link them with signs of guilt. Yet, without the hindsight we have now, his behavior could just as easily be linked with an innocent man who is understandably concerned and frantic over the disappearance of his family. His very conservant neighbor, however, had. I guess I'm confused. Like, one time, like, when my mom left my dad, she fucking just bailed in the middle of the night, right? Just, like, packed a trash bag and fucking left. And my dad couldn't find us, so then he filed a report quickly like i don't know where they are they're missing my daughter's missing i'm going to file a report i'm going to put something in the newspaper so i'm just i guess he never answers a question directly he has superfluous infos to hide his inconsistencies even then, like, damn, even while you're burying the bodies, you're not gonna have a fucking, like, plan? The perceptual advantage of knowing Chris on a semi-personal level, and could analyze his kinesics in a far more accurate manner than the police officer. You just wanna go talk to him? I'm gonna get his info real quick. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, no. That's, that's a tell. This man, fucking tell it, my guy. Fucking go for it, please. Oh, their pictures are still around the house. That's pretty recently. For once, the lousy neighbors help. Yeah. Ooh. So the fact that he's over here blabbing his mouth. You know, that's kind of ironic because I'm having issues with my upstairs neighbors right now. They're so fucking loud it drives me insane. Me this was just after the moment he had shown both Chris and the officer his surveillance. Again, neighbor just be helpful. Morning, capturing only Chris This is great. This is a great representation of the kind of neighbor you should be. This is why we should like leaving the house after loading multiple unidentified things into his truck. Oh, there's cameras. Ooh. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Maybe you should feel a little bad for having such a fucking uppity house. Ooh. Yep, and such quality cameras. Fuck, dude, that sucks for you. That's the thing, right? If at least if he was in some fucking excluded, like, closed out house. I just, I don't know. It's just amazing to me. Although not fully incriminating, as Shannon and- Like, this is what- I'm, I'm gonna be honest, this is what you fucking get for, like, getting to know people so well, right? If I fucking turned up missing, I don't even think a neighbor knows my name. To be honest. Because I don't talk to people. In this situation, they seem really fucking friendly with people in their area to the point where they can perceive his fucking body language. That's crazy to me. And on top of that, cameras, bro. Ooh, you really fucked yourself. And the kids could have left through the back entrance. This was an extreme- Because that's exactly a great point. 
once you see them leaving then? Extremely detrimental piece of evidence and would have no doubt been extolled by forensics and made Chris an immediate prime suspect. Yeah. Like, how did they get out of the house and then? Chris they just so happened to, like, leave without being detected? For some bizarre reason, agreed to be interviewed by two separate news stations where he came across as extremely... <laughs> this is one of those... I need to talk to a lawyer. The unimpassioned and detached from the alarming nature of the situation. Like when I got home yesterday, it was like a ghost town. Like she wasn't here, kids weren't here. I have no idea like where they went. And right now it's you got K9 units, the sheriff's department. Everybody's like they're they're doing their best right now to figure out like if they can get a scent. If she wasn't, homie don't care at all. Apparently would cause more concern among neighbors, especially if they had shooting matches with their spouse i guess so that's why i'm like just just out of curiosity like is killing a pregnant woman a double homicide i can't spell unborn victims of violence uh i don't care Why, okay, yeah, exactly. Why is it considered a double homicide if unborn babies don't have any rights? That seems odd to me, but yeah. Interesting. All right, just out of curiosity. Hmm. Anyway. I guess it is. Here, like, where did she go? Like, once I got here, it was like, all right, who can I call? I called her three times, texted her about three times. We can prove that at least. Say, you know, what's going on? Like, if she's vanished, like, I want her back so bad. I want those kids back so bad. Right now, I don't even want to just, like, throw anything out there. Like, I hope. That Contradictions in the law. That's impossible. That for sure. Right now. And Hello, gas mask. Kids, last night, I wanted, I, I wanted that knock on the door. I, I don't believe you, though. I don't believe him, though. I don't. I wanted, to see the, I wanted to see those kids just run in, run in, just, just barrel rush me and just give me a hug and knock me on the ground. That's why you killed them. That's why last night was just horrible. I... It was such a ghost town. I mean, my wife and kids were missing, but the car was still here. And, like, there was nothing on the security footage about them being able to leave the house. And so I was just really worried, so I just texted her a couple times. And she never responded, so I was like, I guess that's that. I couldn't do it. I just... I'm hoping that somebody sees something or somebody knows something and comes forward. So you. Shannon, Bella, Celeste, if you're out there, just, just just come back. Like if somebody has her, just please bring her back. I mean you know where they're located. You can always bring them back. I need to see everybody. I need to see everybody again. This house is not complete with without anybody here. Please bring her back. This could have been construed as shock trauma, where a person will turn numb. <laughs> I don't believe him. There isn't the small sprinkle of concern on his face, and he looks quite relaxed. I can literally see his breathing and juggling. Your... He's just like, gosh, you know, this house is so empty. I I really wish somebody would bring back my kids. It's really affected me a lot. And like, if you if the, if they know if they know where they're located, please anybody. How monotone can you be? Then retreat into. Well, I'll be honest. First of all, if I was in this situation, I would not be fucking emotionally prepared to do a fucking interview with the, like news. Themselves as a means of escape. Quite frankly, Yet the viewers watching this live from home were probably thinking what we, as the retrospective audience, already know. He was called in for questioning four hours later. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Good. Somebody saw something. Somebody knows where these kids are. And I keep saying kids, I'm sorry. Kids in your life. I know you're going through a lot, so I'm not going to keep you here all night. Tell me exactly what you remember, and I'll take notes about where we can go. Oh, is this where we're going to start hearing him really contradicting his story? Because I'm hyped about that. So, this 148 AM. Let me switch chairs. Okay. That's when they come knocking. How did he kill them? Does it say? 
One of the oldest and most commonly used techniques is for the interrogator to sit between the door and the suspect. This is for the purpose of heightening the feelings of isolation and dependence. It's an indirect subliminal message, letting Chris know that the only way out of that room is through the detective. It's an excellent tool for stripping away confidence, thus increasing the telling signs in body language. That's smart. That makes a lot of sense. I like that. When information is fabricated to physically corner them yeah because if you're looking at the table it's like why would you have to do that in any other circumstance you could just sit in front of him the male interrogator was good but the woman one played him like a fiddle Ooh, ooh, all right 4 a.m that's when my alarm goes off for work and i'm just gonna get dressed brush my teeth everything i do upstairs okay about 4 15 that's when i get back to slide right into bed next to her and start having a conversation with her about having the house, the house up for sale and talking about it except like actually going proceeding with the separation okay and obviously it gets pretty emotional like we're talking about you know like we felt this the disconnection was there like falling out of love and trying to stay together maybe just for the kids sake but we're realizing that doing like our homework it's not so I always wondered, like, what's, like, the, like, differences when you know somebody's lying so much to the point where they have to give you too many details and, like, being too vague? That's not gonna work. Yeah. Ready for work, goes to work. Receives call from police, returns home. Kind of suspicious. Because, so someone, so they just left. They left, they disappeared. Okay. I opened the garage door. And but she didn't take anything? I went inside the house. And he the hid the blankets on their bodies. Clothes. Okay. No word be found. She has white rings on her nightstand. Her phone's still on the couch. Her purse is still there. Mess yeah, see, that's that's weird to me. Already. Let's say she did bail, right? Let's say he was right and, like, did bail. One, why wouldn't she at least take her purse and her phone if she's going to leave with the kids? It sounds like it would have been, like, unplanned. Because the kids had enough time to take their blankets, but she didn't have enough time to take a phone and her purse. What sense does that make? Still there. That's like a basic thing. Still there. Also, no car. So the weird. Okay. You show up, please take information, goes to bed, yeah. I was just hoping that, I, mean, I left all the lights on in the house, I was hoping that I'd get a knock on the door. But yeah, nothing happened. Yeah, but nothing happened. What do you think happened? Hmm. If you want to stress them, hide the door or physically close. If you want them to person the door and stay. Hmm. Hmm. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. Me when I'm like taking mental notes, I'm like in the in the future, you never know. First, I really thought maybe she was just at somebody's house, just decompressing, just going off steam. Yeah. But after today, like with the onslaught of all the cars, I mean, all the police cars, all the news, all the canine units. It's making me lean the other direction about someone took her. Okay. But it's just, if someone took her. Even then, don't you think, like, somebody maybe would have noticed anything if there was an invasion? There would have been fucking screams and there would have been fighting. It would have to have been someone she knew. So somebody she knew took her now, okay. Because there's there's no sign of anything like being disturbed, broken. Mm -hmm. But like that's the way I'm leaning now. At first, I thought for real she was just decompressing somewhere. Just, I mean, I thought she was safe, mm -hmm. even though everything in the house was left there. But now mm -hmm. after the day with the news crews and everything, it's just it feels more the other direction, and it's freaking me out. I want to know what kind of texts texts he apparently wait. Actually, hold on. So he called her and texted her, but he just said that the phone was in the house and he knew- What the fuck? Well, that already doesn't make sense. I called and texted her, but you just said that her- that the phone and purse was in the house, so why would you call and text her if you knew that there was no way to contact her? The people with missing relatives are usually very direct and informative. There's a sense of danger and urgency that he obviously likes. Yeah. On that night. I told I woke that morning, early that morning. And okay. Told, like, the disconnection is it's there. Like it's not going away. Like the connection we had when in the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's 
not there anymore. But I'm so confused. I don't know how a disconnection like happens so like abruptly. Like she's literally knocked up, but then like 15 weeks later, you're like, we definitely should not be together. I feel like the love we have is there anymore. Okay. Y'all think a fucking kid was gonna be the glue to your relationship or something? Ew. And it's just like I don't feel like. I mean, if we want to stay together for the kids, I'm not sure if that's going to work. Like bring another. That's what you told her. Yes. Okay. Like having another baby, bring us in this relationship. Do you think this is going to work? with us being together or no separation i think is going to be the best possible route for us and that's when like all the crying and everything proceeded and it was just it was very hard just just to talk talk about that mm -hmm. but also doesn't that seem kind of circumstantial they just so happened to have like a uh, very like issued conversation and then she disappears that morning i needed to do it face to face okay and i needed like I needed to see her face, like, while I did it. I couldn't uh, text phone. Y'all out there banging without protection? For real. Whatever. I needed to be face-to-face -face and be able to- Have you been following that Roe vs. Wade stuff? Dance? All the fucking drama? They're starting to already fucking try to ban contraceptives. They're trying to ban, like, condoms in Arizona. And some, like, officials are trying to ban, like, IUDs. It's all fucking trickling down, dude. I can't fucking wait for that. Oh, you had a miscarriage? Oh, you had a stillbirth? Go to fucking jail, bitch. See her fucking ridiculous. She was gonna be at least reciprocating back to me. Oh, what did she say? She said that it was, I mean, it was, she wants, she wanted to kind of work on it, mm -hmm. but if that's the way I was feeling, I told it before, America is a third world, first world country. My thing, right, is there's so many other fucking countries that are, like, more religious than the U.S., and even they are, like, no, that should still be pro-choice. Also, Ella, I think we stuck with Ella. We'll go with Ella. Ella, how's it going? Yeah, like, I don't just... <clears throat> If I get stuck on the Roe vs. Wade tangent, I feel like I won't get off of it. But it's just, it's just gonna be fucking downhill, bro. It's, like, to the point where it kind of annoys me that even though, like, 70% of, like, our nation is, like, pro-choice, the fact that people that are so pro-life are just so much more fucking aggressive about their, like, values and opinions that's then overthrowing it pisses me off. And people should just be more fucking outgoing with it, their viewpoints and do something about it gonna sell something but i need to do four questions for my homework and i can't do it can you help bro what depends on the questions are they like can i bullshit the questions or is it like math because i'm not doing no pythagorean theorem today yeah just channel your hatred and target the pro-life instead of losing your mind <laughs> I, I i still don't get it math fucking i guessed it dude i guessed it it just I'll post it on Discord. Oh no. Show cheese. I do like me some cheese. Anyway, Taint. I'm gonna call you Taint. I know Gas Mask calls you Sandwich. I'm just gonna call you Taint. Because there's nothing wrong with Taint, right? It's an adjective. It's sent. But how y'all doing? There's a mass subreddit for help if we can't help. Right, right, right. Quite so, quite so. All right, I'll skim it, but I'll see if this is even enjoyable. I'll skim it, though. Just just for a little fun, funsies sake. But also, why are you waiting so long to do your homework? Come on now. You know what I say. You don't gotta like your home. You don't gotta like going to school. But I promise you... What the fuck is this? Of the graph shown? Wouldn't this just be... Isn't this like x equals 3?
I don't, and, and no one told me. Isn't that what this all this is? Like these would be y equals, so this would just be x equals three. I could totally be wrong because uh, I haven't had to use math in like five years, give or take. <laughs> it's right. <laughs> Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> what the fuck? This turns into a homework thing? This is... <laughs> I feel like we're not allowed to do this. Oh, <laughs> uh, that's funny, though. Just a taint. Just a little taint. Mm. That's funny. Yeah, same thing. This is y equals 2. What? These are easy. Come on now. You know these. Are they all like this? You gotta know these. Here, we'll show you. Everything on this line, so like this up, would be like x equals 1. So anything across would be y. So this one's y equals 2. And then anything on these would just be y equals and then that number. Yeah, y equals 3. That's all these are. What? This is a fucking breeze. Lucky you. Don't confuse them. Okay. Y equals three. That's all. That's all it is. <laughs> Cheaters never win. Well, I'm trying. I'm trying. You know, like the whole like the. You can give a man a fish, or you can teach a man to fish, and then he'll have food for a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? It's like that. Just so you understand what this is. That's literally it. Now, when you start getting the ones where they're, like, slanted and shit, that's when it might be a little bit more annoying. You see what I'm saying? Cheaters never win. Ever heard of doping? Oh, no. <laughs> You got one more for me? I'll answer one more question. I think there's three, right? You said four. Yeah, there's four of these. I'll do one more. We'll do the last one. Ugh. Match the point to the line that passes through it. This is your X, and this is your Y. Okay? So, the best way to- so, four, two? Okay. How do I- how do I do these? Match the point in the line that passes through it. I mean, I could... What's- where's the option? It seems like... Oh, what the fuck? Okay. So y equals 4, y equals negative 4, x equals 4, x equals negative 4. Are you just supposed to pick one? So you're gonna have to graph all of these, I'm pretty sure. Match the point to the line that passes through it. I drag them down into the blank spaces. Oh, okay. So, like, Y4 is going to be D. Yeah. Y negative 4 is going to be B. X4 is A, and then X negative 4 is C. Let me know if those are right. <laughs> they should be right. I get what- I get what you're throwing down now. And if they're not? Wait, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Okay. We'll start with this. This top one, this one, is gonna be D. <laughs> I think it's D, B. D, B. And then it's... And then it's X, A, C like that that's how it should be in order <laughs> that should be my my answer that's my final answer 
little little math little math intermission. Got to make sure my brain's still working good. Got to make sure I can do that graphing. Yes, yes, exactly. And she respects that. Okay. Uh, 1 p.m. Back to murder. Now I'm on my way home. Little math break. Now back to the murder time. I'm going to check on my family. <laughs> uh, is that just because you're worried with, based on the conversation? Uh, well, had the police contact you by then? No. Okay. Two, but, I arrived. I'm sorry, go ahead. But uh, Nicole says she was probably going to call the cops. Okay. All right. Now, so it sounds like Nicole's pretty worried. Mm -hmm. Ooh. I've never seen somebody, you know what, and I'm not going to hate on people spelling their names weird. I shouldn't be a hater. My name's spelled in a way that's boring and sucks, so at least it's a little interesting. Oh, so I, I, once, once... <laughs> you saved me, thank you. Anyways, I'm going to chill here. All right, understandable. I appreciate it. Thank you. And uh, I'm glad that they were right. I'm glad it was something easy and you weren't coming in here being like... I cubed, because I would have been a little... Actually, I cubed is like negative I or something, but still. It's been a while since I've done those. Out of her and nothing was going on the house, I was like, all right, I gotta go. Don't get laid again. The questions might be harder, exactly. Those those were pretty easy, but <laughs> in the future, I might not be able to help as quick. Baseline questioning, direct confrontation, would normally make an innocent person refute or... Although I would, I, it sounds like I would definitely make sure you learn how to do those or future math is going to be a bitch and a half because it sounds like you're at like the building block and then they're going to keep making it more fucking elaborate. And then you're probably going to have to start grappling this shit yourself. Statement. There would also be a brief pause as they would need time to process the allegation due to its perplexity. A guilty mm. individual would already be in a defensive state of mind and would normally respond in a hastily modus. Instead Excuse of refuting me. the remark, they would accept it, but try and explain its actuality in a defensive manner. But it sounds like Nicole was more worried. Yeah, because like, most of like... Mmm, she doesn't second cup. I'll be honest, I think it'd be really cool to be an interrogator. I think I just have a bad time not having my face be red. I'd have to be really good at maintaining a poker face. I understand that. Like, you know what I mean? Okay. But for her not to get back to her okay. direct sales group, okay. that was very unorthodox. Okay. So then they're, they're at home. Right. Um, police officers there. Mm -hmm. um, then walk me through that. You ever feel like people have almost like different like archetypes? I don't know. Like I feel like if they both had the same hairstyle and the same facial hair, they would pretty much be the same person. Go through the house. Do you immediately go through the house? Like I seen actually a great thing. I heard somebody that said it was like, like I feel like every single like group of person has like for the most part like 50 just preset faces which is why you see so many people that look similar and then of course there's outliers but there's just like the video game preset faces that like everyone has i don't know it's not being poker face it's also a dead gateway it's about being consistent and coherent in your deception no, I mean, like, if I was an interrogator, because I feel like he would say something dumb and then I would just be like, mm. oh, really? <laughs> oh, yeah? I'm like, oh, okay. I, mm. I open the garage door and I just, I just go into the house. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. Like, I just go in the garage door and I'm looking. <laughs> You're going in the garage. You're like, well, my wife would obviously hide in the garage. You know saying? Hey, let me talk to you for a minute. No. No, okay. No. What's, the, what's the vibe like? I just, I just, I go up there, shake it. You see, what's the vibe like? Can I get a fucking vibe check? I'm, I'm looking. Like, <laughs> I'm still in the garage door and I'm looking. Is the police officer saying, hey, let me talk to you for a minute? No. No, okay. What's, no. The, what's the vibe like? <laughs> I don't know why that's funny to me. Having a police officer vibe check you just to... <laughs> okay, go I on. Just, I go up there, shake his hand, but I'm like, opening the garage door at the same time. Vibe check? And then I go... Yeah, I know you murdered your kids or whatever, but like vibe check, bro. Go through, and then they're waiting at the front door. I go and open that up, and then they come in. I've heard and seen it all. I haven't poked face as much as they are. Another Monday. Mmm, that's true. I'm like, bro, I don't fucking get paid enough to hear this bullshit. Oh, so they didn't go in the garage with you? Okay. Well, they they went in the garage. They didn't come in the way I did. All right. So then, they, everybody goes in. 
Right. Think of the and at four o'clock, that's when um, cause the neighbor, cause the neighbor, I was the officer, I went over to the neighbor's house to see if he saw anything, and who that neighbor's at? Right. I think it was the officer, cause okay. he just went over there. Um, and then that's when the uh, neighbor called him back over. Is that you're doing homework at eleven, watching? Sure, and you're still going to be doing with my life at eleven. Shit, it must be late for you. It's only 6.30 for me. Damn. So he, um, he had some stuff from the other night. I'm kind of showing like whatever he had that, that put motion on it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still have to honestly say, this is like the worst fucking place to live that this guy's at. Tinkerbell, not Bell Bell. My brain crashed. That makes a lot more sense. My brain went like saved by the bell? Confused? Sounds kind of wholesome. Tinkerbell, murder, late homework. It's that's a vibe check. 4 p.m. Police check neighbor security footage and question them as well. Okay. But I, I still I'm like I can't imagine living in some fucking fancy ass upper class house in a nice ass neighborhood and thinking that you could get away with this. Amazes me. Have we talked about that? Is that what we're, we're no, I mean, it just shows Nicole dropping her off, but her not walking up, and it shows me loading my truck up about the time that I told you I left. Okay. Um, can we talk about something that's kind of hard to talk about? Yes. Um, so when I work investigations like this, yeah. I have to keep an open mind on everything. Okay. See, this is a, I hate to break it to you, bud. But, uh, you're kind of sketchy. I want him to say, that's a little sus. I want to hear a police officer say that. Just, like, once. Keeping an open mind. That's a little I'm sus. To you talk about your wife and your marriage. And it sounds like you had some motive. And the day she goes missing is the day that you guys have marital disappointment. That's what I was saying. I'm like, so the morning of, you just so happen that she disappears. I'm pretty good, so if you get in trouble, just shut the fuck up and get a lawyer. You can easily get entrapped or incriminated. Yeah, like, I wouldn't... Don't tell. <laughs> In the one situation, I'd be like, don't talk about it. Don't tell no one about it. So you can understand what I'm thinking about you. Yeah. What do you think about that? Ooh. <laughs> so what do you think about that? Uh, I think you're a little suspicious. What are your thoughts? Uh, makes me sick to my stomach, honestly. Like, I know- I would say, understandable. That makes sense. Like, I've talked to a few of my friends, it's like, you know, this does not look good on you. I'm like, I know. Literally, one of the neighbors was like, you acted weird and you're fidgety. It's like, people that- if people knew that we were having marital issues, they're gonna look at me. Especially with the way everything looks. It honestly just makes me sick to my stomach because this is something that I would- Well, yeah. At least you live in countries where you have little risks of being beaten up by the cops. To be fair, Dance, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I know we have a lot of fucking police, police brutality. But I'm like, uh, kind of aware of like my privilege, like I probably wouldn't. And I know in fucking counties like this, where it's all fucking upper class, educated, nice ass people that get all the fucking taxes. <sighs> no, probably not. In another situation, there's a good chance that based on the suspicion that you could probably get the shit beat out of you. Although, compared to where you're at, you're right. It's probably not to that Never point. Do. But, Ever. I don't want to claim in every situation because there are some real fucked cops. I, I know, like, you have to look at every, every... Oh, I heard, like, like recently we had, like, some fucking borderline execution that just originally started at a road stop. It was, like, um, it was at, like, a place where I used to live, but a police fucking full-on, like, executioner styled like, killed some guy. Which originally just started by, like, uh, I'm pulling you over for some sort of, like, traffic violation. And it escalated to the point where he fucking blew his brains out. At this point, this is something I would never do to my kids or my wife. And of course, the body cam just so happens to cut out, right? It just so happens to cut out. At all.
This is what is known as the pause technique. I was going to say that. I'm like, I love it when you pause and the silence becomes so uncomfortable for someone that they feel compelled to start talking more, almost like a stream of consciousness. If it isn't any decent lawyer can have confessions thrown out the window. Exactly. No, from even from what you see, it's like, you know it's going bad. You know it's going bad. You know he's fucking scared. It's like... Yeah. It, it was a... Uh, I mean, I could always go into these, but anyway, yeah. No, the it's... suspect answers a question, the interrogator will... I wish that they had more fucking education for police. I know a lot of people's, like, logic is, let's defund the police, but it's kind of like, so you want them to have even less education and less knowledge on how to deal with situations and less opportunity for time to do thorough investigations of individuals before they're recruited into the police. Yeah, that sounds like a great idea, sure. Remain silent while maintaining eye contact. This physical demeanor gives off the subtle cue that he expects more information to be divulged. Yes. And they already know more yes. than the suspect realizes. I'm not sure, like, what I could do, like, to make people believe that just because it's a... I do like sometimes when the pause technique fails though, and they're just just stare at each other for a while, and then it's like, what else do you want me to say? What was that? They think you were having marital discord, they would automatically leave me, but there's no I would harm Hold on, I want some closed captions. Damn it. Anybody in my family. Anybody in my family? There's no I would harm anybody in my family. There's no way that I would harm anybody in my family. Okay. At all. I don't believe you. If it is about the well-being of people, it is about the state having to pay millions if there is a wrong cops in question. Oh shit has to go in. Retrial without confessions evidence due to past present police brutality. In that case, yeah, it's fucked up. Uh, I think, I think if anything, it really should be invested in a different way. I find it fucked up that, it, that police officers are literally like, you just have to be 21. No education, no background anything, no requirement for fucking nothing. It's like, you have to be 21, and uh, if you can listen to a man tell you to do a couple push-ups, you're good to go, bucko. You're absolutely peachy keen. Use a stun gun? Here's some handguns, hand handcuffs, and have fun. That's literally it. I feel like maybe if there was more requirements, and it was a little bit more fucking, like, respectable people in it, maybe there'd be better, uh, situations. But the fact that, like, I feel like police aren't even taught how to fucking, be like, de-escalate situations appropriately, or deal with, like, mental illness or anything, is a fucking recipe for disaster. I know we were having marital discord and we had that conversation that morning and then also i think police officers should still have to have fucking like routine checkups fucking frankly ball toxic balto how's it going lad you know what i mean why is it that like after you pass your fitness check to be an officer after that it's just kind of like fuck it bro Eat all the eat eat everything that you want. Just sit in your car and watch people fucking drive on the freeway. I feel like they should have to have like routine yearly checkups still. Like, what's the fucking point of somebody if like most of like police deaths are because you have a fucking heart attack? Like, come on, <laughs> it's her, right? Some courts won't even let you set foot. And if you don't have continuous footage from at least three different cameras, murderers have walked away due to the. It's absolutely it's like, holy shit. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. I'm probably going to look at the Jody Arias. Yeah, Jody Arias. I'll probably look at that case eventually, too. I'm curious. But yeah, I don't know what, like, anything about this case, Balto. So kind of hype. They'll say Dance recommended this one. So we'll see how it goes. But I already am like, there is tons of fucking holes in his story. She goes, mm. I've seen that before too, though, Dance. I used to sit in on um trials like that, and there'd be some cases where it was like 
we don't have proof that you read the Miranda rights. So even if we don't necessarily agree that this person's innocent, you didn't have proof that you read the Miranda rights or you gave us conflicting times. And thus, we have to throw the case out. We have no idea where she is. I've seen that happen before. Because I used to, um, like, intern and, like, watch court cases, like, every day. Cops are under-trained under in the U.S., like the Army. If you have too much brain cells, like, use your diplomas, you won't ever be allowed to become one. That's what I fucking think. I really wish that they had... Like, even looking at some of the degrees that we do have oriented towards criminal justice, it's like... Yo, thank you so much for the resubscription. It is much appreciated. We almost there. Ooh. Oh, yo, your name changed. That's cool. It had a little color change. But thank you. I was much appreciated no, about that. No, I had nothing to do with any of that. Hmm. Wait, what the hell? We have Icky Balto and then we have Ball Toxic? What's going on? Are you telling me the truth? I am telling you the absolute truth. Why should I believe you? A truthful individual. It is an option, it's a fact. Balto and not Balto, what the heck? It's a fact. If you score too high at some tests, they cannot legally let you become one of them. <laughs> one of them? We cannot indoctrinate you into our Murica cult. I mean, it's almost like highly intelligent people would be a complete waste a waste of resources, eh? In metric Norwegian? Oh, I was not aware of that. Am I, I'm probably butchering it then. Is it not icky? Ick, ick. I'm so sorry. We'll normally respond <laughs> to this question with a question, such as, why are you asking me that? Or, what's going on here? They will often protest the aggressive uh. nature of the Inquisition, or give a short and forceful response. Because I'm a very trustworthy person, and the people that do know me, they know how I'm a calm. Okay. Like a Canadian E. <laughs> okay, okay. Person. I am not an argumentative person. I am a- They say A? Person. Yeah, I'm pretty close to Canada. I've actually been confused for can Canadians. I don't know, hard to say actually. I don't know, I find that surprising. I don't get Canadian from the way I speak. I think- I, I'm in the house too much, and I think I talk like people I, I watch. Intelligent people may make reasonable decisions and not being able to justify them. Militarization of the police. True, true. Let's not be intelligent <laughs> individuals. Uh, too good for that. That's never gonna be abusive or physical in any kind of relationship. I don't believe him. I would never harm my kids. Like looking at him, I wouldn't want to be in a room alone with him. I would never harm my wife. I mean, you can talk, I mean, any, you can talk to any of my friends. No, I don't, I don't trust him. He seems like the kind of guy where he might have microwaved animals as a child. Don't like him. They know me. They know I'm a low-key guy that's quiet. So I'm, I'm, yeah, and maybe you're in your head too much. And maybe your anger boiled over because you bottled it up. Because you're not expressive. Maybe you're hiding something. Uh. I'm not about confrontation. I'm not about anything that elevates to that level which is why your neighbors hear you constantly fighting hey i mean you like if someone like yells at me screams at me. here's the thing about an argument it takes two to keep the argument going right otherwise it's just somebody yelling he had me there like the fact he was making himself innocent like you kind of have to like i just don't he's just sus i've actually been accused of robbery by the police my reaction was entirely different than it wasn't me. me. I feel like I would almost need to- I would want more information. But even then, it's like... I just take it. And why? Because I have basic characteristics of somebody that was identified to the robbery? Interesting. Oh my god, how was that like? I just try to get it by the wayside and get it back. Also, work. hopefully everything went good and you were then released. <laughs> just a cool conversation to where, like... That sounds spooky, that though. Because I am not that person. Mm. I've never been that person. Mm. So 
don't believe it. It was fucking crazy. It was the Norwegian anti-terror unit that arrested me in the middle of- Oh my god, that sounds fucking traumatic. You used to be a security officer? Oh! The plot thickens. No, that sounds horribly traumatic, though. Jeez. Okay. <laughs> Savage. Passive disapproval. And there was an armed robbery of money transfer. Oh, Jesus! Let me take a polygraph. Sure. Okay. Let's take a little break. Like fifteen minutes away, I was driving home at like one fifteen nighttime. Sure. I'm gonna come back in here. So, what do they do when they've like horribly fucking traumatized somebody, and then they're just like, you know what? Sorry about that, bro. Go on. They better not show pictures of bodies or I'm gonna be disgusted. The robbers were wearing, like, pants with reflex stripes. Like, our security- Oh, I got you, and I had a hoodie on because I was on my way- Oh, yeah, understandable. So you had a similar uniform then, I get you. That makes- I mean, that makes sense then why it would be, like, cross-confused. Been on 20 weeks training before they are qualified to go on patrol. Most countries across Europe and Asia, you need between 18 months and five years of training, plus the time spent at the academy and only if you're allowed to being hired with high school diploma. Yeah, see, I feel like, one, most people who want to be police officers have wanted to be officers for probably quite a bit. And so spending the time and effort to be well qualified would make sense to me. Also, if you had, like, more educated officers, I feel like you could pay them more because you would have much lower fees when it comes to all the fucking legal bullshit and complications that officers end up getting involved in because of their shit training. Like, literally before I could even pick up my driver's license the papers, I was face to the ground with- Oh my god. Broke my nose? Ooh. Look at that. Jesus. Picture. I, I would be fucking pissed too. And then they're just like, oh, sorry. Oopsie. What is it? I was gonna permit that. <laughs> Perfect, that works. Uh mod check. <laughs> I'm surprised you'd be allowed to even say that to a police officer. I'm sure someone would take that as, like, a threatening an officer, and then you'd get fucking something else handed to you. Anti-terror often deals with life or death situations involving armed and or violent. Happy to die for the cause. Their actions aren't just... Yeah. Celeste. She's Rampage. She's always the one that's... She's gung-ho. She's always the one that's just, like... She's off. She's either go or she's asleep. No, it's still fucked up, though. Like, like, I get the idea. Especially, I guess you're right, it's an armed robbery, so if they are functioning with the intent, like, this guy might have a weapon. I just, I don't know. There's just so many examples of them being shitty, I feel. I, I, I... I just, I just don't know a lot of examples of, like, still Right, yeah, exactly, Dance. All cats are beautiful. <laughs> Every single one? She's always growling. She's, I'll accept that she's statement, I guess. She's a tiger. Bella, she's the calm, the mothering one. She's the one that's always, you okay? You okay? You fine? Okay. She's just, she's just the sweetest little girl. She's the one that favors me more, and Celeste is the one that... Ugh. Ugh. Ew. I just- Ugh. I wanna know how he killed them. Like, was it a gun? Cause I almost feel like at least a gun's a little bit more impersonal than if he just fucking, like, choked them. Good. Good.
button to back up it so I could get her pajamas on. She's like, no, no, you're fine. I got buttons. I got buttons. I'm not loving it. It's creeping me out. No. What the frick? My things never work. Hold on. Fix It Up Bot has been being a real shit lately. And what the heck is up with that? Hold on. I'll look into it. We'll see. Commands. Mod commands. No. We want a Twitch channel point. Uh, OMFG, super cute. Oh, thank you, Balto, thank you. Part two gets into the me. Oh, shit, we're pretty close to that, too. Here, let me see. I'm, I'm gonna... Source visibility. Source name fatality. Special effects. It's visible. Visible. Not visible. Save. I'll have to toy with it. Eh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'll have to toy with it. Please forgive me. <laughs> it's so sad that I can't transfer my 11 month subscription to my other account. I'm really surprised Twitch hasn't thought about that more. Maybe it's just because they assume that you would just keep using that account because you can just like... Actually, yeah, why do you have two accounts, Balto? Also kind of said that Queenie doesn't stream Norwegian's normal time. What time is it for you over there, Balto? I'm gonna love those spaghetti strips. I have thought about potentially streaming a little bit earlier. I was banned on the other one earlier. Oh, really? And then they unbanned you? Now it's 12.50, I guess, a.m.? I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Mil Do most places go by military time? Is that like a U.S. thing too, or we go by like 12 p.m., 12 a.m., 7 p.m.? Is that a thing that just we do? Do most other places go by our considered military time? She likes long dresses. Why don't we just have a universal time? <laughs> it is normal in every country except the U.S. and U.K. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know why we have to fucking always make everything weird. So, it sounds like I probably could do earlier then. I feel like a lot of people who do watch me, it always ends up being hella late for them. She was the girly girl. She was the girly girl. Oh, I was gonna say, why is it when, like, a child or, like, anybody is, like, empathetic towards other humans, they're automatically characterized as being, like, motherly? Why is it a motherly characteristic to just, like, have care and well-being of others it, i would agree i feel like it should just be universal everywhere but it's just like how we do measurements too right certain places where you couldn't go by the 12 hour system the 12 hour system just seems weird it seems like it'd be such an easy conversion too there's been a bunch of edgy veterans simply made am pm standards after world war ii Ironic because you use military respond of military time. That's why I had to do quotations. It's dark half the year, like nighttime and light as day the other half. Oh, it's one of those areas. I've always thought that was so interesting. Like I don't I don't understand the whole like rotational earth reasoning behind that. I called her three times. Ooh. Excuse me. All right, the polygraph. Uh-oh. Damn, these numbers are fucking crazy. Hyped for this. Like, I wonder how much fucking, like, bank this channel has. Five million subscribers, but it's been almost a year since they posted something? That's insane. We also put dates like this. Yeah, that's another thing. I don't know why we don't just do it universal. I feel like we just want to be like the fucking contrarians of the world and just make it hard. Being vampire on the polar area would be great, right? Yeah. Which makes more sense to me than to go like month, date, year. 
Yeah, that's fair. That's certainly fair. I mean, I guess it would depend on the situation. Because I guess if you did, like, month, I would it be easier to categorize time? Because, like, the month and then the date, as opposed to, like, going by number first? Like, I'm thinking, like, in a computer, I guess. Kind of fucked up for me, yeah. Is this the highest quality? Damn. You, US system wants to be not like other girls. You still use systems of measurement used by 18th century pharmacists. Yeah, yeah, I get that. Imagine having an American internet girl who says her birthday is at 3 5, but it's actually the 3rd of May. <laughs> oh no. Yeah, it was. Or oh, 5th of March. Damn, got him. Get played. Uh. Yeah, mayhaps I'll have to start doing some streams earlier. I have thought about it. When we find the guy who took him. Yeah. What do you think we should do? This is what is known as a behavior provoking question. An innocent person will usually give what is known as a draconian response. They will immediately Death. respond with the harshest sense <laughs> possible for the crime they are falsely being accused Death of. Death to all of them. Committing. A deceptive individual will often give an equivocating response. This means that they will fragment. If you start at like 15, 16, it'd be perfect for me. Three or four. Mm. They're going to come home. I'm right on that right. Three or four. Yeah, 3 or 4 p.m. Say it correct. No, I'm... F yeah. When we find the guy. When we find the guy, they're gonna come home. Life in prison? Christ. Christ already fucked up. He said this. <laughs> no, I get you. Or after my... Imavain kicks in? Oh, is that like a sleepy sleepy medicine? His wife was beautiful, while well, death hasn't been established. Yeah, his past tense, hey? Makes him already sound like they're dead, and I know they're dead. Big words. Is it like a- it's like a prescription that I'm assuming? Because all I know for sleeping medicine here is like melatonin. Would be the, that's what I would- that's- But, fair enough. <laughs> Big sad. No, I have been thinking about going a little earlier, no, though. Three or four probably wouldn't be that shabby at all. What if you hurt them? Melatonin is lightweight. <laughs> uh. Oh shit! I've been missing what he's been saying. Yeah. Avoid responding to the ties in the harshest sentence possible. Yeah. Okay. Let's go back to where he was talking. A deceptive individual will often give an equivocating response. This means that they will fragmentize. Yeah. It's like why wouldn't I pick the worst sentence? Not like I did it, right? Okay, it's like called hypnotica to benzo oh oh sheesh and divert from the question to a certain degree i've never had too much of an issue falling asleep query in its entirety they're gonna come but huh when you find the guy that's what i've never really heard of must not be as common or maybe i'm just not as known i have issues <laughs> Fair, that's fair. Fair enough. I accept that. Also, they're falling asleep. <laughs> Acceptable. They're probably safer than the U.S. Like, so we're just the FDA is afraid we're regarding about local. Oh, exactly. That's true. That penalty is even used in college. Fuck the U.S., man. No, you're right, though. Even the, like, vitamins we have, there's, like, weird shit they put in it. Like, I was looking into it, and it's, like, amazing to me how, like, when people go on vacation sometimes in other countries, they end up, like, losing a shit ton of weight, even if they end up, like, eating crazy foods, just because the fucking ingredients and shit are so much better for you. Because they feel slightly anxious. Okay. I'm Definitely not hard to get. These kids are not alive. Like, there's no... Ugh. It's for panic syndrome? Oh! Interesting. Yeah, I really wish that the U.S. took more inspo from other countries. There's so much fucking data to show, like, the efficacy of, like, instilling certain, like, policies, procedures, or, like, foods and comparing them. I don't know why we don't try to more actively fix things. I guess capitalism, right? 
there's nothing you could do to to cope with that, to make me cope with that, if those kids are not okay. Those kids. Can we keep talking about some complicated things? Sure. Some things that are gonna make you uncomfortable. No, that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I want to see this polygraph, dude. I'm excited. They start making oxy harder to get and to find. Oh, and they eat you. They get you heavy duty. It afterwards good. You've done very good in talking. It's to great you. to make sure that they don't end up getting really addicted to it. I feel like here's just a reliance very because it's like, hey, well, if we get these assholes addicted. Then at least you make more money. That's sometimes hard. And I we'll just keep giving it to them indefinitely. Someone in your position says... It also really depends on doctors, though. I know that there's definitely some corrupt doctors that, you know, get essentially bought out by certain medicine companies. Uh, doesn't want to tell me about that. Because please go help me find my kids, and you don't need to know about my, my marriage argument, okay? So I gotta say, you've done very good at that. Um, and I need you to keep doing that. So I need to ask you about... Um, your marriage and uh, infidelity. Okay. The infidelity. Can I send you a short video? Oh, most certainly, Balto. Of course, you can send me a video. Sorry, I was skimming chat. I have never cheated on my wife, okay. and I. Fully suspect she's never done that to me. Oh. oh, I'm curious. The interrogator was already aware that Chris was cheating on his wife with a woman by the name of Nicole Kessinger. He had handed over his phone earlier on this interview for what he thought was for the purpose of going through his and his wife's mutual contacts to look for potential suspects. Je oh, he full on just gave him the phone? Oh my god. Oh no. Oh, Jesus. Worth the watch? How, oh, let me check how long it is. Here, we'll look at my face. Because your companies knowingly make. What causes, say, heroin addiction? This is a really... All right, we'll take a little detour. Five minutes? I can watch it for five minutes. I don't think I'm properly disclosed in order for doctors to properly detox you afterwards. SMS. Yeah, right? Hmm, good. I love that. Stupid question, right? It's obvious. We all know it. Heroin causes heroin addiction. Here's how it works. If you use heroin for 20 days, by day 21, your body would physically crave the drug ferociously because Damn, that is so fast. There are chemical hooks in the drug. That's what addiction means. But right. There's a catch. Almost everything we think we know. Most of the medications we have have like the same like type of like addictive about components, addiction right? Is wrong. If you, for example, break your hip, you'll be taken yes, to a hospital okay. and you'll be given loads of diamorphine for weeks <laughs> or months. Diamorphine is heroin. Yep. It's in fact much stronger heroin than any addict can get on the street Shit. because it's not contaminated by all the stuff drug dealers dilute it with. Blech. There are people near that being pure given heroin. Loads of deluxe heroin in hospitals right now. So at least some of them should become addicts. Damn. But this has been closely studied. It doesn't happen. Your grandmother wasn't turned into a junkie by her hip replacement. <laughs> Why is that? They're guess we're harder to quit than <laughs> Really? Interesting. That. Why would that Our be? Current. I love that it's like the legal shit's the hardest, right? The theory of addiction comes in part from a series of experiments that were carried out earlier in the 20th century. Rick. The experiment is simple. You take a rat and put it in a cage with two water bottles. One is just water, and one the is other like is water good based shit. with heroin or cocaine. Almost every time you run this experiment, the rat will become obsessed with the drugged water and keep coming back for- mm. Never tried them, so I wouldn't know. But, mm. More and more until it kills itself. I have not. I, oh. But in the 1970s, Bruce Alexander, a professor of psychology, noticed something odd about this experiment. The rat is put in the cage all alone. It has nothing to do but take the drugs. 
What would happen, he wondered, if we- If they have friends and homies to hang out with? Tried this differently. So he built Rat Park, which is basically heaven for rats. It's a lush cave wow, that's where rats beautiful. would have colored balls, tunnels to scamper they down, party plenty hardy. of friends to play with, Hell yeah. and they could have loads of sex. Everything a rat about town could want. Everything, and yeah. would have okay. the drugged water and the normal water bottles. Uh -huh. But here's the fascinating thing. In Rat Park, rats hardly ever use the drugged water. None of them ever use it compulsively. None of them ever overdose. But maybe this is a quirk of rats, right? So what you're saying is people usually become addicts because they have other bad pre-existing factors. Who would have thought? I won't kill turkey with hard drugs and alcohol when I had exams I needed to get my shit together. All I needed was to smoke. Some of the <laughs> right, Dan, that's for real. Well, helpfully, there was a human experiment yes. along the same mm. lines. The via I've always said that what causes like fucking like addiction and even like starting drugs is you have to have some sort of thing fucking missing in your life. Like something bad is missing and you are looking for that thing to fill a void. No more. Which is why it's like I think it's also just like like a thought process. It's just if your brain has never thought of it as an option, you don't even like look to it. American troops in Vietnam were using a lot of heroin. Yeah, People and they were in a bad situation. Really because they thought there would be hundreds of thousands of junkies on the streets of the United States when the war was over. But a study followed the soldiers home and found something striking. They didn't go to rehab. They didn't even go into withdrawal. 95% of them just stopped after they got home. If you believe the old theory of addiction, that makes no sense. But if you believe Professor Alexander's theory, it makes perfect sense. Because if you're put into a horrific jungle in oh, a yeah. country where you don't want to be, and you could be forced to kill or die at any moment, oh, rain down every violation. <laughs> doing heroin is a great way to spend your time. But if you go back to your nice home with your friends and your family, it's the equivalent of being taken out of that first cage and put into right. a human rat park. I almost it's also, it's like the habitual aspect, it's your too. Cage. Yeah. We need to think about addiction differently. Human beings have an innate need to bond and connect. When we are happy and healthy, we will bond with the people around us. But when we can't, because we're traumatized, isolated, or beaten down by life, Sad tree. we will bond with something that gives us some sense of relief. It might be endlessly checking a smartphone, it might be I pornography, video games, Reddit, gambling, or it might be cocaine. But we will bond with something because that is our shit. Damn, nature. Reddit's really malicious, eh? The path out of unhealthy bonds is to form healthy bonds, to be connected to people you want to be present with. Addiction is just an one symptom person. of the crisis of disconnection that's happening all around us. We all feel it. Since the 1950s, the average number of close friends an American has has been steady. Oh, million percent, dude. At the same time, the amount of floor space in their homes has been steadily increasing. Oh, that's sick. <laughs> I'm just kidding. To choose floor space over friends. To choose stuff over connection. The well, that's why we just buy a bunch of shit. A century now has I mean, that's a great way to up, like, addictive shopping and consumerism. It's made everything worse. Instead of helping people heal and getting their life together, we have cast them out from society. We have made it harder for them to get jobs. Or isn't that successful because treatments... Should be custom. Come stable. We take benefits and support away from. Them. It's also why, like a lot of people, I feel like would end up relapsing after rehab if they just end up going back into the same predicament, which is probably why they end up recommending like you need to fucking like change everything going on in order to stop this habit and give you some actually like good them support. If we catch them with drugs, we throw them in prison cells, right. which are literally cages. We and then they want to be more addicted well in a situation that makes them feel worse right. and hate them for not recovering. Yep. For too long, we've talked only about individual recovery from addiction. But we need now to talk about social recovery because something has gone wrong with us as a That's group. That's fair. That's fair, We Balto. have to build a society that looks a lot more like Rat Park and a lot I'm less down for like some rat heaven. Okay. Pages. We are going to have to change the unnatural way we never live. Never did heavy drugs? I've never really other. done nothing like the that. The opposite of addiction is not sobriety. The like, I've tried, like, a vape, I guess. Connection. But even then, I'm, I never... This video is a collaboration. I wonder if that's why some people have more addictive tendencies over others. Would it be some of those pre-existing factors? Because I know other places consider like addiction to be like a disease more than anything else 
I wonder. Did steroids five years ago. How'd that go for you, Baldo? Were you hella ripped? And last days of the war. I was lucky you know my limits saw some people find them the hard way. I never realized. Yeah. On drugs. He was very kind to work with us on this video to spread the word. We recommend that you give the book a try. Our videos are made thanks to your support on Patreon.com. I did growth? Dang, you did the HGH? Jeez. We made an interactive version Is of that effective? with some friends. See the link in the description. Thank you, little rat. Oh my gosh, it's warm in here. Judging Yeesh. by Chris's bold face denial, it's safe to assume he deleted all of his correspondence with Nicole beforehand. Yet he was most likely So on top of him being the fucking cheater. You don't get huge, you get ripped. Never tired, feels good. Damn, are you trying to deter me or entice me? <laughs> Sounds expensive. Oh, yeah, what was I saying? Yeah, what the fuck is up with this guy? Dead ass, literally slept really well. Everything was going great for me. <laughs> uh, it was very expensive. Yeah, growth hormone has some nasty side effects, and the main producers get into chains of lawsuits. Shit. Shit. Man, I want to see the difference. I want to see somebody like before and after HGH. Where that the FBI have programmed. I want to get ripped. Recover every single Let me sit. Of digital exchange sent from a device. Even yeah, you know what? Fuck this guy. He's a cheater and a murderer. Fuck this guy. You not only cheated on your wife, you murdered her and your children. Long after it's deleted. You couldn't just stick with one fucking vice, bro. I see pictures of. Around thirteen thousand dollars for seven months. Holy fuck, that's a lot. Now it has nasty side effects after many years, but one year's pretty good. This is my modern crime. It's so expensive. Jesus Christ! Oh my God! So you just do a little dabble, dabble. Okay. Gentropine. From Pfizer. Oh. So tell me about it. So I did not cheat on my wife. Okay. What do I do to help you walk out of this room and not look like the person who's responsible? Right. Pretty expensive. Yeah, that's a shit ton of money. I got rid of back issues and pain. So it's basically a cure all superhuman drug. Good to know. You have to trust me. I had nothing to do with these, with this, with this act of like evil cruelty, whatever has happened here. Yeah, we never said that they were dead. We never said that there was violence. I thought they were missing. Why hasn't Pfizer made little? <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, I'm a lost smith. I need that. Shit. Sick. Hell yeah. Because my love for these two girls and my wife, like, I don't want anything to happen to them. I've never wanted anything to happen to them. No matter if I'm me and my wife separate or not, or divorce or anything, I never wish harm on anybody. What? Human being in general. Okay. Like, just, just I just want to be a stupid like, human, bro. I don't I need all that them, energy. I want them just to run through that front door and just grab me. Or just bear just tackle me, knock me to the floor, bust my head up. I don't care. Oh, no. no. Of love I have for my family is exponential. And I, it's never going to die. And they need, I want them back. Oh, my God. It's so warm. Can't function. Fucking sweating, bro. <laughs> okay. Yep, that's the new style. I have to have them back. Ooh, start a confrontation. I love confrontation. Let's do it. Stupid. <laughs> I'm not into it that much, but much rather have them. <laughs> uh, wowzers. Wowie. <laughs> when you walk out of this room, there's nothing I can say to a room full of police officers that's going to convince them that you have nothing to do with this. I don't know. Do you know what they think? I, I know what all the, all the, yeah. Here's a 
Huh? Huh? What was that? I want to see this man on a polygraph. I want to- I wish this was in higher quality, because I want to see this man fucking sweat. Right. So instead of just bailing, you had to cheat on her and then murder her. Right. Okay, so what happened? Right. wake her up before I left. That's why I didn't just wake her up, like, just to tell her this. Like, it sounds like you were trying to do a confession for yourself, bro. Wow, you're such an altruist. Good job, Chris. Usually at 4 a.m. I wake up, I go down and work out. This day, I wanted to talk to her. Man, I want to be at that level. For 4 a.m.? Ooh. I love these girls. I love these girls so much. And this picture right here. Celeste and Bella. Those are my life. I helped make those kids. And you helped take them out, Chris. I didn't... I don't know what he had to have Right, yeah. There's nothing in my life that means more to me than these kids. Nothing. Kids, that's, that's your life. That's your lifeline. Well, that's what I thought, but you fucking killed him, so I'm not really sure. Maybe you were just hoping to start a new lifeline with that other lady. That's everything. Like, you make kids, they come first before anything. You would think. Not my kids. Degree of separation. Yeah, those kids. Kids, spouse, family. What does that mean? Oh, like relatives? Well, fuck. If you would kill your wife and spouse, I can't imagine how you'd treat your family. Ooh. Man, they, they better fucking run. No. No. like two hours last night so I'm like running on empty <laughs> right now but I know I can see it he's just so fucking bad at it I wanna I just wanna hear all the fucking lies that come out of his mouth and the polygraph is like wrong 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 again oh ding 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 not correct sure you don't mind if we take a break for the night yeah take a break I'm sure that you are um, feeling some of the pressure from me I'm going to commit to you that we're not going to stop working until we find them. Okay. I'm so... And I, want to commit I just to want to know finish. how it happened. I would there love to hear the confession. Does he ever, like, confess to anything? Or is it always, like, no? I want to hear some murder stories. People with dementia often confess some disturbing stuff. Oh, gosh. Yeah, they sure do, hey? When they're just, like, fucking unfiltered. When you're going to feel this pressure from other people. I'm not the only one. I would love to hear some of those. Like they're like at the age of like when they're already fucking dying. Hell yeah. Everyone. Okay. Everyone, Chris. Okay. The interrogator is clearly receptive to Chris's anxiety and endeavors to amplify this emotion before Ever. ending the interview. He wants to inflate Chris's apprehension as much as possible for the looming polygraph test that approaches. Part three, he confesses and his whole argument slash defense is annihilated. Oh, thank God. Thank God. I'm hyped for that. The following day. Tonight when you go home. One or two things. Okay, tonight when you go home, you better spend all your money, have the best fucking night of your life, because after this, your life is over. You're gonna pass out. Because you're so tired. Okay. And that's probably not gonna be what happens. Your head's gonna go race. Okay. So tonight when you lay down and your head starts racing, there's gonna be things that come to your mind. Okay? This always happens. Very natural. You're gonna say, I wonder why he asked me that. Okay? You're gonna say, screw him, how dare he accuse me? Okay? You're gonna say, I wonder if they thought of this. Okay? And then you're gonna say, I 
probably should have told him something or this or that, okay? True. Those are the most common things. Mm -hmm. um, when those thoughts come to your head... Or a guilty suspect, right? I want you to call me. I think, bro, you need to get some sleep. You need to spend your money on some cool ass shit. Live, live your best fucking night because it's over after those this. Are kids. Those kids have a good dad. And I know it. I should say the picture is so much fun. Yeah. It's a better one. But it's just. I'm sorry, too. Huh? What? Huh? What? Those kids have huh? What? Regret what you did? You need a lawyer first. Yeah, you're right. Honestly, though, so in this situation, right, if they're like, I want to interrogate you, can you just be like, no. I want a lawyer. Otherwise, no. The following discourse from the officer could be construed as the reframing technique, where an interrogator will try and shift the suspect's view of themselves from negative to positive as a means to lightening the iniquity of their crimes and increasing the chances of a confession. However, this That's is a great idea. what is known as passive accusation, where the interrogator is almost certain of the suspect's guilt and indirectly accuses and in some manner indignifies the suspect. This is made evident by the high praises the officer gives to Chris for extremely trivial deeds. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes and cook eggs and give them snacks at night. You know, a lot of, a lot of men, that's woman for it, right? I don't like to get involved. But you're not that kind of guy. What? For extremely trivial deeds. A lot of dads don't get second pairs of clothes. A lot of dads don't cook eggs. Eggs and give them snacks at night. Is this like a man relating to man? So I'm, I'm sorry. I'm coming for this from. I don't understand. Dads don't cook eggs for their kids. Dads don't get give them food. That's man. That's women's a work. Of, a lot of men. That's women's work, right? What? I don't like to get involved. You know what? Men like that just shouldn't get laid, ever. Okay. They're probably a bad lay anyway. Making a woman come? That's woman's work. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you try to go without a lawyer to make play like, show of innocence. It's like representing yourself in court. Yeah, exactly. It's like, no, you should just be apprehensive. I wouldn't say that necessarily makes you look fucking guilty, but whatever the fuck he's doing now is really bad. All right, we got the lady. All right, you mentioned her. Yeah, being nervous makes sense. He's saying stuff that like Chris is going to reuse in his defense because Chris is not a for Right, yeah. Even if people are like, I don't have anything to hide, in his nervous wracking. And I have taken tons of polygraphs. Obviously, in my training, um, I have a Oh yeah, a million percent. Chris is an interesting character. Ooh, Frosty. Hello, hello. Yeah, I've been. This is very interesting. I think we're starting to get right into the muck of it. You had nothing to do with this disappearance. Like we're gonna find that out today. Okay. I have the best training that they offer in the United States. Um, I we use the most validated testing. That'd be so cool to be trained in polygraph testing. I would love to be able to tell some- I would love to be able to be like, damn, that was a fucking um, lie. No I know it's not like 100% or question, anything, but- so Believe me, if you had nothing to do with this, I will be able to show them that today. This is psychological pressure disguised- They're notoriously unreliable because sociopaths and psychopaths can pass them with flying. Yeah, right, exactly. They're not like 100%, but just in like a- like a funny way, I guess. Be like, actually, that was a fucking lie, bro. You got a little. 
nervous and the little needle bit went too high. It's not a routine hmm. procedure during the pretest phase of a polygraph exam, yet this technique will be used when the suspect's guilt is almost conclusive. Polygraphs mm. are not a foolproof system. No. They can be beaten, but with a heightened state of anxiety, it becomes considerably more challenging. And for this instance, he might be even more stressed out because he's she's giving him feedback that she out of all people would know especially what she's doing. On this occasion, the polygrapher distinctly applies this technique for maximum effect. There's actually only two ways you can fail a polygraph, okay? Um, the first way would be if you fail to follow my instructions. I'm going to give you a lot of instructions today about how to sit still, how to answer questions, things like that. So if you fail to follow those instructions, you will not pass today's test, okay? Right. The second way would be if you choose to lie to me today. You know, if you did have something to do with their disappearance, um, it would be really stupid for you to come in and take a polygraph today. Exactly. Right? Like, it would be really dumb. Like, mm -hmm. you should not be here right now sitting in this chair if you had anything to do with Shanann mm -hmm. and the little girl's disappearance. Okay. okay. Right. Well, yeah, we just, everything flourished from there. Like, in 2011, I, pr I proposed to her over in Ocean Isle Beach. <laughs> Whatever happened to just being able to divorce someone the old-fashioned way? Come on. Girl's coming in here like he's fucking King Henry, dude. She recorded it. It was really, it was an amazing day just to see that. And then she left. She was, she was, I was there. Like, she had a midwife for this one. So, like, they actually had me, like, oh, you can stand here and, like, you know, catch her. And, like, well, but Celeste came out, like, so fast that, like, I barely yeah. had a chance to go like this, and they moved me out of the way because she just, like, came out. The polygrapher Ew. will also obtain the examinee's version of the facts regarding the specific issues under investigation. I was just hoping that I would get that knock on the door for a phone call or a text. I mean, Bro, I'm okay. I don't need to hear about this birth phone. story. They have her phone. Like, hopefully, maybe it's a number I don't know. Hopefully, it's, like, you know, like, a burner, a burner phone or something. Some even Henry tried to have his marriage and all before going full <laughs> Henry. Even he wasn't as bad. Some kind of like phone she bought and she could just text me and call me like, hey, I'm okay. Something. Or just get a knock on the door and then the kids just run in. I miss like the kids like sitting at the dinner table and like having to tell them to eat their dinner. This sucks. He's fucking really bad at this. Like I miss them throwing a the chicken nugget at me. Like I was... Am I supposed to feel bad for you? I don't understand. Am I supposed to feel bad for this man? They've only been gone like two days. I want them to come home safe, like wherever they are. I hope they are safe. I really, I really hope they. They're really not. They're not. It makes me feel like, all right, maybe somebody has her that's not, that's not keeping her safe. Give me to the fucking eats. That is. That's the nightmare. He's pandering, trying to get sympathy from the examiner. Really desperate and getting less of complicity if he fucks up. It's like, I don't... Maybe I wouldn't be the right, best person to pander to. Maybe maybe she's also, like, a parent or something, but I'm just like, ew, I don't give a fuck about your, like, nasty birth stories. You're a fucking sus dude. Hey, what was that terrible thing? Also, like... That's the nightmare. What was terrible yeah, can you tell me what the terrible thing would be that you did? Chris recounts mm. a brief summary of the events and states multiple vague possibilities for his family's disappearance. The polygrapher then starts to elect specific timelines for Chris to give his account on. Um, right. You should the next thing you know. Is this where he's gonna start fucking up? Just her getting into bed with you? Is that right? I could not felt her getting in bed. We didn't say anything because I just, I just kind of felt it. Okay. Do you know if she was on her phone or like how any of that works? I don't, I don't think she was on her phone. Was she mad at all? I mean, being crying, crying like she was, crying like I was. I mean, yeah, I mean, she was upset. But I mean, it was, it was, it comes with that kind of conversation. In the next moments, you will see another subterfuge of psychological pressure. This time, disguised Ooh. as routine questioning procedure. I know it's totally awful to think about, but I love it when they preface things like this. What are ways? Because I need to make sure that you know what I'm talking about. What are ways that you can make someone disappear? Mm -hmm. 
That's a great question. Because then it's like, why wouldn't you want to answer no, that? Like, what I've seen, like, on the movies, or, like, how, you, like, how people... Uh, yeah, exactly. What are ways that you could make someone disappear? Go on. Well, what are your first thoughts? Other people? I mean... Just letting him. I realize help with highlighting contradictions and lies. The kind to slice. Right, right. Hire somebody. Dude. Yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. I'm just being honest. No, nope, that's what I want. That's what I want, because I want you to go through all of these scenarios in your head, because I want you to know for sure what I'm talking about when I say that, you know, asking you if you physically caused her disappearance. Okay, like, like, you'd hire somebody, or you have a, somebody you know that, that would do it. I mean, it's like, I don't. I mean, it's hard. It's and, a hard and, I know question to and I know there's stuff. It's a hard question to answer. Right. Because uh, I didn't. It's not hard. You could dip bodies in acid in a huge water tank, bury them, hope they decompose in water, light them on fire. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with this disappearance. Right. But like, so you could at least disfigure it enough where they might not be able to identify it. I well, I want to think about like if, I, if if you're asking like how I would do it, like no I would anyone, just, like anyone how would how it. would anyone cause someone else's disappearance? I mean, you would Sweeney Todd style make some meat cakes. I said, like, you could cause someone's disappearance by murdering them. Yeah. Don't have the patience. Now for dude, confess and get ready for Taylor this sand polygraph, right? Yeah. Yes. So what different physical- I mean, I get why she wants to, right? Because she's hoping that maybe he'll list through one of the options that he did or give some sort of inclination, and he's he's being reluctant. You could stab someone, right? Oh, yeah, choke them, put a plastic bag over their head, poison them. Him. Ugh. Cautious not to mention actual causes of death, strangulation and smotheration. Oh, ew. Oh, that's worse than I would have thought. An object. Um, ew, you really had to fucking. I mean, use a weapon of like gun or a knife. I mean, okay. you could. Splash acid. Smother someone. You could strangle someone. Hang someone. I mean, yeah, you can. All that kind of things. I mean, it's hard to even think about that kind of thing. Ooh, she's really fucking poking the little button there. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can strangle someone. You could drown someone. Yeah. You could shock someone. The water is to hide the scent from animals and people passing by and to prevent the accidental danger. Or in natural causes. Mm. Death. Um, you could burn someone. Yeah, see? Um, what are the ways you can think of? As far as like. Dismemberment. Like lure them into a trap, I guess. So what do you mean? What? Like, you know, like have somebody waiting like around the corner and they. Like, you know, right? Sure. Uh, are kidnapped, locked in a room, poison. Okay. Okay. Yeah, why would he not think of like real basic um, ones? Sure. Um. That's insane to me that he fucking choked and smothered them. So if I ask you that question on the test, Chris, are you gonna have any issue with that? Got you like, physically causing that's disgusting. Going through every single one of those? Yeah, like that would be a way right. you could cause. Gross. Ugh. Okay. I'm not, I, I can definitely like. I can pass. I mean, I think you can murder them, you can kidnap them, you can take them to another country, you could, you know, bury them in your backyard. Yeah. You could do a million things. Yeah. As far right. as um, trying to conceal them. Yeah. Right? Mm hmm. So that no one could find them. Yes. Because at, at this point, she's gone. So when I ask you the question on the test, I'm not asking you about guilt. I'm not asking you about did you make her feel so horrible that she ended up leaving. I'm saying that you were the one that physically caused her to disappear. Either by murder, kidnapping, you know, all of those other things okay. that we went through, okay? You don't want me to list you want me to list all those? Like No, no, no. no. Oh, You're okay. just gonna say no to that question. Okay. I, when I ask Oh, so she okay. physically caused Shanann's disappearance. Okay. 
your answer should Did you literally strangle your wife? No. Right. No. Did you okay. have any issues with that at all? And no. have any question about what I would mean when I was... No, that's, that's totally that like, I just like going through all those that... <laughs> that's right. a lot to really think about. Right. I just have a completely hard idea even imagining somebody breaking into like a community like his. He lived in a place that I feel like could have been borderline a fucking gated community. That's why the cartels put people into barrels full of acid or water. Then you just have bones to smash, preventing any identification that caused the death. Well, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, if anything, if you had access to acid, that would probably be the best point. Because, exactly, you can't identify it. What do you do with a bunch of fucking bits of bone? Yeah, that was... Like, cool, calcium. I'm gonna have you take a bathroom break. Thank We've you. been in here quite a while. You're gonna be taking what's called a directed lie polygraph. Mm -hmm. What that means is there gonna be test questions on the test where I want you to lie. I know it seems kind of weird, but you're gonna know which questions these are and they're gonna be easy to answer. They're all gonna start with before 2018. The directed lie test has three types of questions. Known truth questions. These are easy questions to answer, such as, are you sitting down? Or, are you wearing shoes? They serve two purposes. The first purpose is to provide a baseline read- Oh, they're gonna ask shit where it's gonna be like, well, obviously you didn't murder your wife. When the subject is telling the truth and should elicit very little bodily responses. The second purpose is to hmm. disconnect the examinee's thought patterns between each question as a means for resetting their cerebration for a- Ooh, that's really smart. Big moms to a qualified medical examiner, smashing the whole thing or grinding it into dust. Would be much safer. Yeah, that'd be my thought. That exactly makes sense to me. Cause right, there is still identifications on just merely like the bones itself. But yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That's where my brain would go to first. The polygrapher just explained to Chris. Whenever she says before 2018 at the start of a question, Chris will know he is purposely supposed to lie. Each of these questions are deliberately constructed. Before 2018, you murdered your wife. All answers will be responded with no. Relevant questions. These relate specifically to the crime being investigated, and the examinee will know that they are supposed to respond truthfully. A guilty subject will show a much stronger reaction to the relevant questions than to the control questions, even though they will be lying on both of them. This is due to the interesting posed by the relevant questions. I didn't realize that's how polygraphs work, but that'd make a lot of sense to try to at least help them be a little bit more effective. Interesting. We can figure out the cavemen diets and cause of death from thousands of years older. Yeah, true. Very well, true. Say before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? And you're going to say no. Because you're telling a lie. Awesome. Ooh, these seem like a little, little fucky. Interesting. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited for this. Did you write the number one? No. Did you write the number three? No. Did you write the number five? No. This portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. I want to take a polygraph test. I don't know what I would talk about, but I think it'd be cool. You can relax. feel. This is the last time the polygrapher will have any correspondence with... Hydrate, you're right, you're right. Chris, before the real test begins, she gives him an initial compliment in a reassuring tone. You did great. Uh, was... You remembered the lie and everything. That was awesome. Was... <laughs> this momentary boost in his confidence is then abruptly ripped away as he receives the following information. So, <laughs> you obviously are a really bad liar. Have people told you that before? Like, the second mm -hmm. you tell a lie, like, they can tell, like, on your face that... Because the second you lied to the number three, like, I don't know if you heard me clicking, but I, like, turned down the sensitivity because you were starting to go off the page. So that is what I need to see. Oh, my gosh. You were right, Dance. Damn, she was, like, fucking tearing this man apart, and he hasn't even fucking started the real shit. What a great way to make somebody's fucking nerves horrible. Dude. As a flicker because that... Tells me that you know what's wrong to tell a lie. 
um, and you're actually having a significant reaction when you lie. So that is awesome. So thank you for being a okay, liar. I, I, no, that's like a good I'm thing. That's a good thing. We don't want to be good liars. So thank you for being a liar. Um, and that just shows me that, you know, obviously on the test when they're asking, you know, significant stuff about your wife, um, if you're lying to that, it's going to be a good test. Ew. Oh, no. I appreciate that. He's like, fucking great. I'm fucked. Great. I appreciate that very much. More Dude. Now, so. Oh, wow. We're already 20 minutes into this? God, I wanted more fucking shit talking with this guy. Awesome. And the coolest thing about this is right now, there's only one person in this room that knows what the truth is. And in about five minutes, there's going to be two of Dude, she can probably just see us fucking. Oh no. That's the coolest part, okay? And then I can go share that with them out there. Do people not realize that there are like flaws in polygraphs though? Like, are these even able to be like used in court? Because I feel like you have to know that they're not 100%. Do it. The test is about to begin. Please remain still. Hyped. I'm fucking hyped. Do you understand that I will only ask you the questions we have discussed? Yes. Regarding Shanann's disappearance, do you intend to answer all of the questions truthfully? Yes. Is your first name Christopher? Yes. Before 2018, did you ever lose your temper with someone you cared about? No. Did you physically cause Shanann's disappearance? The ones that f the ones that fuck me up are the, like, so for everything that says before 2018, I, you're supposed to say yes. Part three, or how I, be I became a prison wife. Oh no! Were you born in 1985? Yes. Yeah. Before 2018, did you ever say anything out of anger to a loved one? No. Are you lying about the last time you saw Shane? No. Are you now in the state of Colorado? Yes. Before 2018, have you ever wanted to hurt someone to get even with them? No. Do you know where Shanann is now? No. The fucking pausing, bro. Ugh. Portion of the test is complete. Please remain still while I take the instrument out of operation. Ugh, I'm stressed out. I'm stressed I'm for him. Shane, is all of it? Can I get with the shank to everything? I don't know either. Okay. Oh, I'm so fucking grossed out by this man. Dude, I can't believe he fucking smothered his own kids. Gross. Fucking yikes, indeed. Oh my gosh, I didn't forget part of it, did I? Ugh. So grossed out by him. God, the third one's gonna be rough. He is getting slowly- They're fucking beating him down, slowly but surely. They're breaking through all these fucking layers. He falters so much. So, um, it is completely clear that you were not honest during the test one way, I think you already know that. Um, you did not pass the polygraph test. Okay. Right? Okay. So now we need to talk about what actually happened. I feel like you're probably ready to do that. Uh, I didn't, I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Chris, I, 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 I know. Stop. 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 Take a deep breath. I'm like physically cringing so bad. I want you to take a deep breath right now. Oh, fuck, dude. You're fucked. You're fucked, dude. I don't even touch anything given by the baby that could be collected to you. Prince Sneaky. Ooh, that's a great point. God, I'm like. The confession, bro. We finally made it here. I'm hyped. I didn't lie to you on that polygraph, I promise. Ooh, Chris. Chris. <laughs> Chris, 
Chris, stop. We already know what you did, okay? And then that's when they dropped the, we found the bodies. <laughs> In... Man, that lady needs a posture check. We all need a posture check. Shit. He he knew he was already over with. This is a technique known as social exchange, an interpersonal persuasion strategy in which the interrogator provides the suspect with a psychological reward in return for the information they need. I didn't realize they were able to just collect shit like that though, Dance. I guess if you put it on their things. In this case, she's trying to convince Chris that the alleviation of mental weight is a worthy trade for a confession. She does this in a manner that protects his self-esteem by giving him appreciative reinforcements. And I appreciate that because you knew sitting down in that chair that you weren't going to pass today and you knew I was going to find out because I told you that and then you continued to stay knowing that you could at the end say you know what I just need to get this off my chest everything that I've just I've told you I didn't I cannot lie on this polygraph I am I don't know how much I could I could just tell you right now like I did not it's, it's not I even know. it's not even an option right now because you did not pass the polygraph I so I know you were being accepted so that's not even an issue, an issue right now. The issue right now is what happened to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste. The following tactic is called the futility technique, a building block to induce a sense in a suspect that any resistance on behalf of their cause is futile due to the overwhelming evidence against them. This was- Open palm, extended hand, reaching out. She's very good. Ooh, even the body language analysis, Dan. As I should watch more of those. They're so interesting. Chris was in fact still free to leave at this point. That's the issue right now. Okay, so let's talk about it. I feel like he just feels like he's stuck. He went too far into it. I know, I know you want to tell us. I, I, can, I can see it in your face. Holding this lie in is going to do nothing for you. I, I know this. Like, okay. I'm not like trying to like cover things up like yeah but you kind of are because in in no it's normal this is no longer an interview to collect information. The steps of asking questions and receiving answers is over. And yeah, they pretty much got what they needed. The process of leading the suspect into a state of mental exhaustion. The detectives will attentively watch for denials and stop them before they can be voiced. Letting the suspect deny his guilt will only increase his confidence and prolong his cerebral stamina. Normal people would do that. Normal people that make a mistake initially are going to go, I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't do anything. That's normal. I would expect that. That's a natural reaction that someone's going to initially lie about something like that and then eventually tell the truth. So this is your eventually telling the truth time. This is where this is where Shit. the rubber meets the road, Chris. Some people speak volumes of words or facial expressions, body language. So I can correct upon gesture. Very understandable dance. Very true. Like don't let this continue any longer. It's like when you face somebody and like you lean towards them. Yeah. Uh, I'm not trying to make anything continue. Like, I want them back home. Or like where your eyes lie. But you know they're not coming back home. You I guess you could even argue sometimes slouch posture is a way to come off like less argumentative. You know that. I don't know in the back of my head. I'm, I hope they come back home. Or come down to but them. you know they're not. Chris, Timmy and I are confused. Okay. And here's what we're confused. I told you that we've done some work overnight. Yeah, it's like a good cop, bad cop. Okay, that wasn't a lie. Uh, we know a lot more than you think we do. Okay. The dossier technique is a variant of the futility technique. The only yeah, are acting like you have a lot more information even if you don't have it. Being that the detectives are far more cryptic and often deceptive about the evidence they have. This will hint at things in a vague manner for the purpose of escalating a suspect's uncertainty. Where are they? I don't know where they're at. I do not know where they are at. If I could have my babies back home right now, I would. I want them back. I want everybody back. That is the God's honest truth. 
Although the detectives want I bet you do. Intensify Chris's psychological stress levels. They do not want him to become reactively agitated, as this could lead him to objecting and resisting every mm, step of the way. That's a great point. And the interrogation will never get off the ground. It also significantly increases the chances of him requesting legal counsel and ending the inter Yeah, I am so surprised that he hasn't fucking stopped at any time during this process. To think like he has his back to the door and they are applying pressure. He's going to bust. Reality has been crashing down. Karma's vision. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know why he fucking sat here so long. I fucking wouldn't be saying shit to these people with such a fucking huge accusation looming over you. God. This elicits the interrogator to change approach and utilize what world the story get a lawyer is known as the ego up technique, where the detective will build on the self respect of the suspect through positive reinforcement. It is very surprising to me, and it warms my heart that you're the type of dad who can pack a bag in the morning. We know just what to put in there. We know just what to put in there as a backup in case they have an accident. Okay, we know what the clothes to put in there. We know what they have for breakfast. You know what they have for a snack and a dinner and a nighttime snack. You can tell me the book you read to your dogs. Okay, I know you love them, but you aren't here today lying about something else. So we need to talk about. Your daughter. I know. <laughs> no fucking kidding, dude. And she's very good. Uh, I, I, I saw her to my breath away. I never thought in a million years that could happen. I, know. I never felt that way about anybody, like, anybody in my lifetime. Mm -hmm. I'm not proud of it. She accused me of it. I denied it. I. I Liar. And I feel horrible for it. Like, so you murdered her. And it was. I don't want to. It didn't hurt her. You're doing a good job. This is the Chris that I knew would come out today. This is the Chris who tells the truth because you're a truth teller. I don't think this girl did anything to hurt anybody. When you leave her out of it, okay. you get back to your wife and your daughters. Okay. Where are they? That I do not know. That was what I was holding back. Like, I didn't know, like, what I did. I, yeah, I don't fucking believe him either. He's just bullshitting me. Why cheat on a pregnant one pregnancy apparently makes... <laughs> uh, I don't know. Ew. You weren't asked about... Pregnant people gross me out, if I'm gonna be honest. That was... I was holding back from last night. I don't know why that is. I just have, like, an aversion. Here's the challenge that we have. We knew about Mickey, so we didn't need to ask you about her in the polygraph. We just didn't need to, because we knew. Okay? And so, that's why we didn't. I wonder how recently he cheated on her and how long the cheating was going on. We were new to you, sir. Okay? We're very, very worried about your daughter's anyway. I have to. This should have I been bet. the happiest time of your marriage. Okay? You would think. You and Shanann. This should have been the happiest time. She's making a little money. She's making good money. You're making great money. You both have a job. You have beautiful kids. You have a beautiful house. You're in Colorado. Clean air. Good people. Okay? And on top of that, you look pretty good now. Since the breakthrough, his hands have gone motionless. Ooh, that's a good... Right, he was talking all with his hands earlier. Because I was... Where you guys are happy and thriving and productive. Okay? And I believe that Shanann's the reason none of that happened. This is called the how and why solution, a technique that allows the suspect to admit a lesser act and blame the victims, while at the same time minimizing the crime and motivations of his actions. Mm. I believe that she's a controlling person. Maybe doesn't listen to you as much as she should. I think that she can do whatever she wants and you can't. Okay? I think if you were to go to a restaurant, she would order whatever the hell she wants. And as soon as you order a nice steak, she says, well, buddy, it's because you're a good person. And I think that she... You know, I was wondering when they would do something like this. Like the, you know what, buddy? I'm going to man to man with you. And you know what? Wives are bitches. Maybe I can see why you murdered her. I get it. She's down your neck all the time. I get you, dog. Because you're the good guy, right? To leave the marriage. Ironic that we're talking about you and Mickey. I think that she was the one who started on that path first. What do you think about that? I wouldn't have thought about that. Okay. And the other thing I think is interesting is 
You don't got a lot of say now. Type of person who's controlling, doesn't listen, does what she wants, is walking away from her kids. Here you are defending her. Because to your core, you want to take care of the people you love. Yeah. And that's the reason why. That's a good tactic. We want to give you an opportunity today. Oh god, I just want him to fucking confess everything, though. They're, like, almost building this sort of, like, unsaid camaraderie amongst each other. To just help us find them. You know? Okay. Chris, right now your dad's outside. He doesn't realize that even by minimizing his actions and blaming the band, he is fighting base for his own... Yeah! Yeah, that's exactly it. Ooh! the country behind him. Also, the like looming stare for the lady on the left, too. This entire time, dude, I would be fucking stressed. Damn. You lied to everyone you talked to. And they all bought it. Well, I don't know if everyone. You're right. We're just gonna say so. Will you please help us find your babies? I want to find them. I've told you you're. Over and over. I want to find everyone. So tell them where they are. Can you understand that some of this just doesn't make sense? Was, how is it possible that a woman and two kids are just completely right? I promise you, I have, I have nothing on my hands that's I did nothing to those kids or her to make them vanish. As the interrogation goes on, the constant and relentless psychological pressure is set. Yeah, it's just not believable. On your hands? Yeah, I bet. You had something on your hands. puts Chris at the edge of his ability to function cognitively. It's a slow and methodical process of breaking down his resistance. Well, yeah, they really are just chipping away at a fucking block. With the land to the slaughter. Yes, I would definitely agree. They have, like, such a wonderful dichotomy going on between the two. a balance of pugnacious and reassuring psychological techniques. I just, I just find it hard that... You talk about like just having this emotional, you know, conversation with Shanann, and you're bawling and crying together. Right. Yeah. And you have not shed one tear. Yeah, you don't give a fuck, dude. In two days that you've been here, no, no. not one. And I help. How, like, how could you look at a picture of your kid knowing that they're probably fucking dead and have no care? I don't understand that because I don't get it. You're these are your baby girls. Right. And you have not shed one tear. You don't give a shit, for them dude. not being around. Chris, I, uh, I, 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 I lose my four-year-old in the store for ten seconds, and I start to go panic. Yeah. Panic. Common sense. I have not sense. seen any of that from you. At all. Help me understand that. I love those girls. I, I would never do any of this. Oh, now he's wavering because he was accused. As soon as she accuses him of not crying, he wants to cry. Yeah, he's probably fucking wanting to cry because he knows he's fucked. It's worth catching three bodies and risking life without parole or death. <laughs> Agreed. He's fucking exactly. Nothing is worth fucking losing your entire life over like this. Almost nothing. But especially not a fucking person. God. Yeah, no, that's weird. Also, how hard is it, dude? Why was this so fucking hard? You could have gotten with the other lady without having to fucking slaughter your whole family. Is that weird? It's weird. Don't. don't. Oh, he's so sad. Oh, he's gonna cry now. Oh. Look into that, like, what a I bitch. Don't love my kid, well, tell me, my explain wife. to me. You're, you're crying with your wife that you're leaving her. Yeah. Or send us clear reactions and matches miss dude. Also, like I feel like any semi fucking sane woman would be like, You fucking murdered two kids and your wife for me? You're fucking crazy. But you don't cry that your two little baby girls. I'm hoping they're you? still around somewhere. I'm hoping they're still somewhere. In the next moment, hmm. you will see step seven of the read interrogation technique known as the alternative question, where the suspect is given an alternative and far more morally acceptable choice for what happened. Chris, did Shanann do something to them? No, I don't know. I'm serious. I have no clue. So you wouldn't know. They didn't leave the house. 
Did Shanann do something to them, and then did you feel like you had to do something to Shanann? They were at the house when I left. They were. Okay, she's just, she's just, yeah. They weren't there. They didn't leave. They vanished. Posture check. You right. You right. You were dead. The only way they could have left is in your truck. Exactly. Something happened in the house that you know about. Exactly. You know that something happened to all three. His story doesn't make any fucking sense, dude. It cannot. It cannot. But how's it going, Captain? You say this every time. I w fucking wish it could. That'd be sick. But I want to know if something happened to these baby girls first that you had to- God, if he would have just fucking talked to a lawyer first. He's fucking buried himself. Literally buried himself. Like his wife. Seriously. God, what a fucking idiot. Into your own hands and deal with. You had to clean it up for I wonder if the situation would have been different if the neighbors wouldn't have noticed so quickly. It, no. Chris, you gotta tell us. There's something that happened to these big girls. Look at them. I know. Where he came in, I was watching videos. We have no doubt you love these girls with all of your heart. I do. I have no doubt. I do. I have some doubts. But we make mistakes. That's okay. It's what we do with those mistakes that make us who we are. Because it seems like you're thinking about it right now. What do you think? So how does- I mean, he would probably still get, like, fucking, like, imprisoned, but, like, how would this work if, like, she killed the two kids and then he killed her? Could you paint it as, like, a self-defense? I wonder. She could have. Second bake through, outright denial. If the neighbors didn't notice so quickly, he probably would have staged a voluntary departure. Remember, he had her phone, keys, and all of hers in. Yeah, that's a that's certainly a good point. Because he had all of the shit, which is why a lot of his earlier story didn't make too much sense. I feel like you cleaned up for her. I feel like that's the type of guy that you are. Ooh! This is a great path. This is his Out of the house with their blankets and their animals. Right. It's such stupid cares. That's where caring dad goes. So you either cleaned up after Shanann or you made the mistake. And I mean, I want to believe that when Shanann did it and you felt compelled to fix this, so Shanann didn't look bad. That's what I. That's what I want to believe. I don't know, you're not telling me that, so makes me think Is he gonna take the bait or is he just gonna full on collapse in on of himself? What did she do though? Tell us, Chris. Chicks are crazy. Can I talk to my dad or something? Absolutely. Come back. Do you want to bring him in here? No, uh, I just talked to my dad like flew across the country. Chris, I can't have a you really combo his ass with these techniques yeah they're doing really great going back and forth like this i it's almost like they want to give him a fucking fake alibi by and he i i feel like he just wants to grasp onto it would you please tell him what happened you need to realize that your dad is not going to stop loving you no matter what you tell him you are his child i don't ever i don't know and he will not stop loving you there. Never. Do people really just blindly be like, you know, son, I know you murdered your wife, um, you murdered your kids, and you cheated on her, but like, we're still cool. I don't no, fucking. It's the last chapter in anyone's story. At all. Okay. 
Yeah, let him ponder. Hey, oh, you can see that better. time just. How much time you need, okay? Sure. You want me to spend here? Uh, yeah. yeah. Sure. Is that his dad or? He's our friend escape and they are handing him the rope to hang himself, right? Okay. Yeah, how emotional? Oh, the fucking. Ugh. Yeah. Go on. Go off. And. You worked out. Yeah, what happened? Go off. So now he's going through with the fucking alibi that they were making up? Because he didn't think of this prior? Okay, so now he's going with that. All right. So now it's all her. Okay. <laughs> okay, dude. All right, dude. Holy shit. So is he gonna claim self-defense now, like I said? But to him became his narrative, and he is yes, no, any complex questions instead of going on forever. Yeah, true. What? You could have said this earlier. And also, wouldn't you think that you would then fucking call the police right after such a horrible event? This is disgusting. Since the cops gave him the pieces of his narrative, I can guarantee you that they can prove every single piece of your bullshit. Just like that, he's like, yeah, seriously. You should have gone a fucking lawyer ages ago, dude. He could arrange fucking nothing. He is fucked. I, I love how fast he adopted the narrative as soon as they brought it up to him. You couldn't have been a little more fucking creative. Okay. Less than ten seconds after the mention of the word lawyer. He must be really desperate. The guy was a terrible liar. Seriously. Nonverbal empathic communication. They immediately divert Chris's attention from the well-informed advice of his father to their own appreciative reception of his contemporary admittance. Can you tell us what you told your dad? She 
using that little top thing. Now you got a whole story, hey? Although not the sole avowal they are pursuing, Chris it's still something. Partly to the crimes, yep. and they now have one foot in the door. He is yeah. no longer free to leave. The interrogation Correct. now returns to a non-suggestive process, where the detectives will collect further information. And I'm assuming watch him just slowly fucking go in circles and walk himself probably deeper into a hole. They will not contaminate with excessive or direct input. I'm honestly also confused though, right? So like let's say he did get him off of her. He didn't call like 911 or anything. Like, like, I know they might have, like, looked fucking blue or, like, whatever, but you would think that you would still fucking call somebody in to see if they could fucking save them, rush auction to them, like, something. Call 911? Maybe? Thank God we got fucking locations, boys. I don't know what to do. I know. I didn't know what to do. Like, none of this, none of this made sense. Why would she hit my fucking girls? I'm sorry. I know. I know you came in today to do the right thing. You weren't afraid. You did nothing. Right. Did she need to play back at all? When you did that? The rage that I had after seeing that I not much. I didn't know what else to do. I know, just come over to I know. I mean, I mean like I know. Uh... Like I know they're trying to comfort him or whatever, but I don't think I'd be able to fucking comfort a dude this fucking roadie. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know what else to do, so instead of checking to make sure that my kids were actually dead and not savable, I made sure I wrapped their fucking bodies up and put them in the back of my truck to dump them in a river. Whose first response is, let me dump their bodies in a river, not, let me call the hospital. <laughs> like, what to do? Call an ambulance for your kids. Strangling someone to death takes a long time. And if they don't struggle for long, there isn't a line between unconscious, unconscious slash brain damage and dead. There's a fucking... Yeah, exactly. That's why I'm so fucking like. Ambulance. Fucking ambulance, bro. Like, no, I just did this, and I just did that. What do I do? Not wrap them up and dump their bodies. And lie about it. Your body just kind of takes over. I hate this man. What's gonna happen? I'm gonna help them get out of there. Chris, I know they're gone, but they're still your babies. And you still your dad. And you're one of them. <laughs> you need to want someone else to find that out there. <laughs> you don't, I promise you. Can you give us a second so we can try to get some things arranged if you do that? <laughs> yeah, probably. That'd probably be your best bet. Does it not really believe this? Why is this happening to me? Huh. 
How deep of a confession does this go? Just like any old news news or something. No, no, not tonight. But eventually. Eventually it will, yeah. For the whole world to see, my dude. Where about? Even a newborn suffocates after three minutes, and adults can suffocate for like five to ten minutes after death, depending on how trained was the aggressor. I just love how he's like, my first reaction was to hide the bodies. Not, not save them, nothing like that, eh? So it sounds like, I mean, it feels like to me, now we know pretty well how to go get him. Is there anything else we need to know? No, that's it, huh? I think you let down your daughters. Can I ask you another tough question? Can you fit it all on the table? Just saying. Nishi, Shanann, choking, strangling. Right. Tell us more. You get her off the floor. Do you think um, about calling an ambulance? Call. No, I know, right? So? I've never seen something like that in my life. So? And she just like lay over, like nothing was. You weren't you weren't fucking panicking. You weren't trying to fucking like give them CPR. You weren't trying to like compressions, bro. Give them some fucking air. Get shit fucking blood flowing. Make sure their heart doesn't stop trying to put fucking pump blood, dude. Like, I don't want to be a dick, but I feel like everybody's trained, like, the basics, right? Your first thought was, let me fucking kill my wife over save my kids. I feel like you should have some fucking priorities. Moving at all. No gas, no breath. At least it was totally just blue. After the baseline information of Chris's version of events is gathered, he is now locked into an alibi and timeline of affairs. Correct. That forensics will subsequently examine and dissect in ways so they can use it against him. The tone of the interrogation then reverts back from information gathering to a confrontational nature. So Chris, you've been doing this job for a long time. I know. I, uh, I know a lot of about psychology and there's artists like what people are thinking. Right, million percent. My parents, will never even want to fathom that their kid might be just yeah. dead. Even if their kid's dead. That's my thing, too. Fucking denial. Like, you can't be dead. You can't be. Blue in bed. I mean, stiff, like, been dead all night. They still call an ambulance. People, yeah, so yeah. Someone can revive their child. And they, when the ambulance gets, it, gets there, and they're like, gosh, the kid's been dead all night. Like, there's nothing we can do. And the guy's like, what are you, why are you not doing something? What are you talking about? That's what I'm like. That's what we're used to. So I just that's what Yeah, I'm his reaction's so fucking weird. I'm not even a parent, but I shouldn't have a fucking more common sense reaction than this fucking dude. What's going on in your head and, and you, left? you weren't thinking about the dead kids that your wife murdered or the fact that even if somehow they believed you, you just confessed manslaughter. Yeah, like so, what she was what she did. What? I just took over. I just I would hate for Shanann to get a bad rap. She didn't have anything to do with it. You know, it's not fair. Uh -huh. It's not fair. There is no technical term for this approach, yet it's a clear attempt by the detective to interconnect to the suspect's sense of morality, which is always under the assumption mm -hmm. that they have any. Like enough bad stuff is happening. Right. Like we need to stop the bad stuff from happening. Okay, you want to tell us the truth? So you're good with the public knowing that Shanann killed her daughters? I did not hurt these girls. Are you okay with the public knowing that Shanann killed Yeah, it's good. I did not hurt these girls. Okay. I'm not sure I believe you. I don't believe him either. 
Are you sure she has any tattoos? No, my god, no. I'm gonna ask what it looks like is that you found a new life. And the only way to get that new life was to kill them all, yeah. Mm hmm. And I think that you killed these girls before their mother. Chris pled guilty to these exact allegations two months later. Hold on. Let me hear it one more time. And the only way to get that new life was to get rid of the old life. And I think that you killed these girls before their mom came home and then killed her man. What a fucking nasty ass person. That's what we're kind of left. That's what we have to believe because it just doesn't make sense. I mean, to her point. I walked in and my kid was decapitated, I call an ambulance. Exactly. So, Knowing there's no hope. Yeah, because... Makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So, either you're this monster, who says, yeah. I just want this young, hot girlfriend, so I'm going to kill everyone and hope it works out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've seen a new lady that gets my dick hard. Let me just fucking massacre my kids and wife, then. The best way to deal with those urges is to just completely fucking wipe the slate clean, eh? So, I think we're very, very close to the truth, but not quite there yet. So if you're not that monster... I'm not a monster. You are. What's gonna happen when your cause of death comes back to you? Or the girl's not going to. It will. Okay. You sure? I'm 100% positive. Don't believe it. Come back to me. And what happens when a coroner looks and says she's your fingerprint? Right. What is it going to be? It's going to be Shanann. Why take their bodies out of the house and bury them? Exactly. I was scared. I didn't know what else to do. Okay. Nothing, what were you expecting to happen else. fucking after either? Just nobody would ever care that they were missing? I, I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I honestly didn't know what to do. Scared of what? Scared of what everything was going to look like. There was... My two babies were gone, mm -hmm. and I, I just did that to my wife. And I was the only one left in the house. What do you expect is going to happen? You already have a history of lying, bro. It did look bad, right? It looked, I mean, this was a nightmare. Yeah. Okay. Yesterday when you were talking, before we kind of got to this um, mm -hmm. moment today, you mentioned that um, we were talking, you said, I don't know where they are, I don't know where they are, and then you said something along the lines of, whatever happened to them was act of pure evil. What did that mean? Right. Yeah. Can you elaborate on that a little bit for me? Is this it's evil that I saw when I walked on and she had to stop dancing? You got a whole new fucking story, don't you, bro? What's the difference between Shannon and Shanann? So after we, after we look at their bodies, we're going to have a lot more questions. Um, things are going to be different then, but if you're willing, we'd love to talk to you then. He really has to stop with talking to the police. He's dug himself a hole so bad. Um, I need to check that you don't have any weapons on you. Man, can they install better cameras, though? Okay. <laughs> um, we'll do that. Go to the bathroom. I'm not going to go in the stall with you, but I'm going to go with you. Okay. So we'll come right back here. We'll make a decision about how first thing that goes. All right, so you might stand it up so I can check. I wonder what happened next. Since this is the final part, eh? He's making her for the insanity, please. Breaking news. It almost never works out. And even if you can get insanity, it's a horrible fucking life that you would get stuck with. Imagine getting locked in a fucking, like, insane sound, but you're not mentally ill.
It's almost like they think I, it's worse than prison. A true testimony of how mental fatigue can restructure an individual's cognitive rationale. Chris maintained his innocence even after the failed polygraph. And if he had kept that stance, he would have walked out of that police department as a free man for at least another night. Yet after a prolonged state of isolation, anxiety, and fear, coupled with the cerebral influencing tactics of the interrogators, the alleviation. Yeah, and he just grasped onto that fucking story. Perceived as enough of a luxury. Just to fuck with. Freedom for it. Chris, someone stand up for me. I'm gonna have you face that wall. Lift up your hands. Fuck, dude. Data describes how Chris Watts Colding deliberately ended four lives. Oh, we got so much fucking more of it. Oh, damn, a full-on sentencing hearing. To life in prison. Good. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. There are no words to adequately describe the unimaginable tragedy. Oh, at least we can see it better now. Everything else is in fucking 420p. ...express the horror, the pain, or the suffering that the defendant has caused to these families, to this community, and to all who were a part of this investigation. However, I do want to spend a few minutes sharing with the court the details of the crime. As Good. so far, you've only had an opportunity to review the affidavit and a few facts. Yes, I want to hear the full deeds. I think, I think after this video, I'm probably going to wrap it up because I'm getting kind of hungry. But I, I'm curious. I want to see. I want to. I want to have a a full synopsis of this. The questions that have screamed out to anyone who will listen since August 13th of 2018 are why. Mm hmm right why did this have to happen how could a seemingly normal husband and father annihilate his entire family for what Poon? these are the questions that only one individual in this courtroom or on this planet knows the answers to i fully expect we will not receive the answers to these questions today nor will we will we at any point in the future i don't expect that he will ever tell the truth about what truly happened or why even if he did, there is no rational way that any human being could find those answers, acceptable responses to such horrific questions. The best we can do is try to piece together some kind of understanding from the evidence that is available to us. Thank you. Yeah, give me some more details. Okay. The defendant coldly and deliberately ended four lives. Not yep. in a fit of rage, not by way of accident, but in a calculated and sickening manner. Oh, so they think there might be some premeditation? Shanann was 34 years old. She had married the defendant in November of 2012. Okay. Over the weekend leading up to August 13th, she had been at a work conference in Phoenix, Arizona. Okay. And re uh, returned home in the early morning hours of August 13th. Dude, that fucking suck. I get down at the work conference just to be greeted by fucking death, dude. We know that she got home about 1.45 in the morning. The mm -hmm. digital camera on their home shows her arriving back home from the airport. Shortly thereafter, at least according to the defendant, they had a, what he referred to as an emotional conversation. So she just got back and then he murdered her. The state of their marriage and about what their lives would look like going forward. Okay. What was said during that emotional conversation, only he knows. What we do know is that shortly after that, the defendant strangled her to death with his own hand. Oh, okay. I misunderstood what he said. He slowly took her life the morning of August 13th. Right. We know that this was not done in an uncontrolled, vengeful manner that he tried to describe to agents from CBI and the FBI. Dude, but if it was premeditated and not some sort of, like, vengeful anger impulsive situation, I still am confused why he had absolutely no fucking plans. If that were the case, you would expect to see vicious, horrible bruising about her neck, shoulders, Right. You would expect to see the highway bone in her neck broken. You would expect to see some kind of defensive wounds on his body yeah. as she struggled and fought for her own life. None of those. You don't just kill your entire family in the middle of the night. You can con conveniently lose the bodies without eyewitness. The suspension of prevention is pretty hard, especially suspension. Yeah, exactly. The only injuries that were on Shanann's body were one set of finger uh, or bruising what appeared to be fingernail or finger mark bruising 
to the right side of her neck. We know that our experts will tell us that it takes two to four minutes yeah. to strangle someone to death manually. You have to hold somebody down a long time. The horror that she felt is the man that she loved wrapped his hands around her throat and choked the life out of her must have been unimaginable. Even worse, what must Bella, age four, and Celeste, age three, must have experienced or thought is their father, the one man on this planet, right. supposed to nurture and protect them, was snuffing out their lives. They both died from smothering. Let me say that again. Smothering his... The man his... seated to my right smothered his daughter. Why? Imagine the horror in Bella's mind as her father took her last, last breaths away. Your Honor, understand very clearly, Bella fought back for her life. The frenulum, the connective tissue between her upper lip and her gum, had an inch and a half, excuse me, a centimeter and a half laceration. She bit her tongue multiple times before she died. She fought back for her life as her father... Ooh. Now he fucking cares. Celeste had no such injuries. In fact, she had no external injuries at all. But according to the medical examiner, she was smothered nonetheless. The defendant then methodically and calmly loaded their bodies into his work truck. Yeah, seriously. Not in a hasty, hasty or disorderly. No, like he knew what he was doing then. He was seen from the neighbor's doorbell camera. Well, he had a bad fucking plan. His truck into the driveway going back and forth into the house and back out to the truck three different times. One time for each of their bodies. He then drove them away from their family home one final time, intent on hiding any evidence of the crimes that he had just committed. Yeah. God, those fucking neighbors are so fucking perceptive. You're right, Dan. The one time having nosy neighbors actually serves some sort of fucking benefit. God. In one final sign of callousness for his wife, his daughters, and their unborn son, and their remains, he drove them to a location that he thought no one would ever find them. Right. To one of the oil tank batteries with which he was so familiar. He knew this was safe. He had texted a co-worker the night before saying, I'll head out to that site. I'll take care of it. He had carefully ensured that he would be alone in the middle of the plains to secrete away the remains of his family in a place that he hoped they would never be found. In one final measure of disrespect for the family he once had, he ensured that they would not be together, even in death, or so he thought. He disposed of them in different locations. Gross. He buried Shanann and Nico in a shallow grave away from the oil tanks. Bella and Celeste were thrown away in the oil tanks at this facility different tanks so these little girls wouldn't be together in death. <laughs> Imagine this. This fucking, like, f final description of everything just paint them in such a fucking even, like, worse way. This defendant took those little girls and put them through a hatch at the top of an oil tank eight inches in diameter. Bella had scratches on her left buttocks from being shoved through this hole. A tuft of blonde hair was found on the edge of one of these hatches. The defendant told investigators Ew. that those tanks seemed emptier than CC's because of the sound that the splashes made. These were her daughters. Good fucking God. Significant Thanks for being fucking perceptive about that, Chris. When his co-workers arrived at the tank battery later that morning, to a person, they all described him as acting completely normally. It was a normal work day. Even while his daughter sank in the oil and water not far away from him. And then his efforts at deception truly began. We've all seen the emotionless interviews. Oh, totally, yeah. We just did. Media asking for help in locating his family. We what, they, what, are they trying to fucking comfort him now? Why? And that he hoped that they were somewhere safe and that he just wanted them 
He told investigators that they were oh, real easy for them to come home that morning and that Shanann had told them that he was she was taking the girls to a friend's house for the day. What is striking about this case, Your Honor, beyond the horrors that I've already described. So many different stories, and he couldn't have picked one. That he created by his actions. Yeah. While he stood in front of TV cameras asking for the safe return of his family, scores of law enforcement officers, neighbors, friends, and family scoured the area, fretted for their safe return. They texted him begging for any information and sending him their best wishes, all the while he God. knew that they had died. The There's so many people in this room, too. Think of the place is fucking packed. State Patrol hazmat experts who had to don protective suits and who were called upon to pull Bella and Celeste out of those oil tanks. Or the coroner employees who had to conduct these autopsies. Or the victim assistants who frank frantically attempted to ease the suffering of those affected. Why you gotta do this man bold like that? If he needs to cry, he needs to cry. Why? Why did this have to happen? His motive was simple, Your Honor. Damn. He had a desire for a fresh start to begin a relationship with a new love that overpowered all decency and feelings for his wife, his daughters, and unborn son. While Shanann texted the defendant over and over again in the days and weeks leading up to her death, attempting to save her marriage, the defendant secreted pictures of his girlfriend into his phone and searched and texted, excuse me, texted her at all hours of the night. While Shanann sent the defendant self-help self and relationship counseling books one of which, ironically enough, was thrown in the garbage. Oh. He was searching the internet for secluded vacation spots to take his new love in research and jewelry. Oh my fucking god. Took the girl oh my fucking god. <laughs> this guy's even worse than I thought. He sprinkles emotions over very objective and irrefutable facts. It is a miracle that Chris is there isn't taking a Xanax. Dude. She's trying to repair the marriage. He's looking to spend all their money on some new fucking lady. Oh my god. Family in North Carolina, the defendant went to car museums and the sand dunes with his new girlfriend. The start Look at jewelry. Look at jewelry. And they didn't think that they would find any of this? The plot fucking thick and so fucking bad, dude. Between the subjects of their internet and text content. He's not fucking drowning. He's in full fucking tar. Even the morning after he killed them and disposed of their bodies, he made several phone calls. One was to the school where the girls were supposed to start, telling the school that he would, that the girls would not be coming to school anymore, that they were being unenrolled, presumably to give him some more time before law, enfor law enforcement notification about them going missing. Right. He contacted a realtor to start discussing the selling of his house, and he texted with his girlfriend None of this answers the questions of why, however. No. Nope. If he was this happy and wanted a new start, get a divorce. Exactly. You don't annihilate your family and throw them away like garbage. Why did Nico, Celeste, Bella, and Shanann have to lose their lives in order for him to get what he wanted? Your Honor, justice demands the maximum sentence under the agreement. I agree. As you will recall, the agreement calls for life sentences as to Shanann, Bella, and Celeste, and all of those to run consecutively to one another. It also calls for the count of unlawful termination of the pregnancy as to Nico to run consecutively to counts one, two. So not a double, okay. I would suggest that the extreme aggravation present in the defendant's conduct and in his, uh, the efforts that I have described mandate that the sentences for counts seven, eight, and nine for tampering with the deceased human mm -hmm. being each be the maximum of 12 years, and that those sentences run consecutively to one another. Million percent. That each of these... He should never get out. These were not the subject of one act, but each oil tank that he walked up with his daughter's body and the hole that he dug for his wife and unborn son mandate a mandatory consecutive sentence. Yeah. Yeah. It's been alluded to this morning, but the defendant was certainly eligible for the death penalty in this case under the existing law state of Colorado. As you heard, Shanann's family strongly opposed my office seeking the death penalty and being bound for life insurance. Money insight. Yeah, yeah. That's in large part, as you've heard, why 
It's true. Four lives were lost at the hands of the defendant on August 13th for reasons that we will never fully understand, nor will we know. In the end, the Rusick family was much more merciful towards him than he was towards his wife, his daughters, and his unborn son. Prison for the remainder of Well, I don't know if wanting a, them, him to stay in prison over a death penalty is merciful. He should have to fucking live with what he's did and feel a horrible fucking long-lasting life. Yeah, that was fucking crazy, dude. Jesus. That's some heavy shit. Well, I'm glad I watched that case. Damn. I was not expecting it to go that way at all. That was a fucking... The plot just kept getting thicker and thicker. Sheesh. God. Anyway, goodness. I feel like that was a bit of a heavy stream, but I enjoyed it, so that's fine. Anyway, it's been nice coming back. I feel like whenever I take long breaks, the first stream's always like a little, a little wishy-washy, but I get back in that group. I'll probably make some more, uh, death penalty, let them serve three, like, yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, no, fucking deal with it, live with it. Also, good luck trying to fucking be like, yeah, I murdered kids in prison. That's gonna be, that's gonna set you really good. To rot, to grow old, to end up as, yeah, exactly, yeah. Full on, let him suffer. I completely back that, too. That's why I laughed when he was, like, more charitable. I'm like, I don't know if that's being charitable. I think charitable would have just been, like, putting him out of his misery just real quick like that, so... Tisk tisk tisk. Goodness gracious, but yeah. Anyway, I appreciate you guys for coming to hang out with me today. I'm planning to be back tomorrow. I I might be I might do some snooping and maybe try to think up some good uh plans for stream tomorrow. But uh I'm going to get some food, so I appreciate you guys for hanging with me. And and yeah, I'll catch you tomorrow was a pretty interesting case and uh